ass too, don't I? Dude, I got so much to do. This is ridiculous. Yeah, do. Kevin, why me? That's uh, all I want to know. Because I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry about that, Echo. That's fine. That's not gonna come across. That's like Latio cast. Yes. So you get this, you get this as well? Yep. Pain in my ball bag. 541. Connect. All right. We're on the Ladio cast, which means we're broadcasting on the rant. And now we are recording. Oh, baby. Good golly, Miss Molly. And everybody on the Facebook can see Matt back in Studio A drinking his specialty brew from the Elementary Brewing Company. Oh. There we go. Delightful. It's a big daddy. Tonight's show is brought to you by Ryan and the folks at Elementary. Let me pull up this Facebook now. Yeah, let's try this Facebook stuff. Hey, look at this. Hey. Kevin is on the kiss ouch. Oh, it, it, it still has my shape of my flat buttocks in it. So that means it's still nice and fluffy. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. You like my chin? My chinny chin chin. Chinny chin chin. Fucking A, dude. Dude, yeah. I look so handsome tonight. God. Tony, is this couch memory foam? Uh, only if it's uh, odory memory. Oh. Odory? Odorific? Odory? Odorific memory. Yes. So this is going to be annoying. We're going to be passing this camera around back yeah, and forth. We're, we're working on it. That's all. Work in progress. Oh, boy. Well, it's been... 16 it's been, months. It's been 16, 16 months. It's been a year and a half since we did the cast. It told his basement with his family. Oh, God. <laughs> What's the matter, dude? You can really see the sunburn on my knees. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> I didn't notice that till your shorts rode up to your neck. Oh, my <laughs> goodness gracious. Oh, fuck me. That's what you get for getting naked at an Orioles game. Oh, That's, man. That is a true statement. <laughs> I didn't get naked. I just took off my shirt. Take off your shirt. Take, take off, off your, your pants. Take off your feet. Oh, man. Matt right. was Bucky Nay. I was in Bucky Nay. There was a man a couple rows in front of us, and he took his shirt off. So everyone's seen me take my shirt off with Tombstone Jesus. So he said, Matt, take your shirt off. So I took my shirt off for a couple minutes. Wait, so a stranger told you to take your shirt no, off? No, 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 no. The man in the section next to me he took his shirt off. So the wonderful people I was with said, Matt, you take your shirt off all the time. You take your shirt off. I and said, you said, sure. I said, you know what? It's very warm. And it's very sweaty. I think I'll take <laughs> off my shirt. And then pictures were taken and they were sent to my wife. And I was like, you know what? I'm putting my shirt back on before I get in trouble. Wait, wait, wait. Who, who narked you out? <laughs> Are you kidding? Who narked me out? Are you kidding me? Everyone in the group. Well, Twitter was one thing, but to send it directly to your wife. And that they put it in the Discord. Ah, the Discord. They know what they're doing. They're a bunch of shit stirring troublemakers. It seems like a breach of a friendship, if you ask me. No, nah, it's a good time. We had fun. Mm. I don't know about that. This is going to be weird having to move this camera around all night. It's like the, it sounds like a, it looks like a. Like a James Bond, like espionage, like wiretap. Yeah, it's like double. It's like I'm playing N64. <laughs> we should put this on a swivel. We gotta figure this out. You gotta get a train to just drive around the room. Oh yeah, like under like a Christmas tree. All right. Well, there we go. We'll, we'll put a picture of the wall. Can we get a proper intro, Matt, please? Oh shit! Yeah, buddy. You know, say some shit. Like oh yeah, oh yeah. So it's episode five forty one. We're back in Studio A. There's a tornado warning. There's severe <laughs> thunderstorm warnings. Wait, what? We went to but yeah, man. Come on, get up on your shit, hey, bro. Come on, come on Cam. All right. You know what I learned this weekend? Did you know Prince Harry is out of the royal family? Oh yeah. See, I didn't know that because I'm not up on my times. My voice is killing me. Yes. Because I had a great time at Best in the World, and we're going to talk about that. The MLW is back. I met Milwaukee Tom. We got tons of New Japan news. Money in the bank this weekend. Slam anniversary. Picks. No guests. Just us back in studio. The Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast, episode 541. Next in your face.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are live back in studio A for the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. Coming to you live on the Facebook, facebook.com slash losers podcast. Live on the rant, rantemradio.com. And wherever you downloaded us, you're listening to us right now. We are the Shining Wizards, where, of course, it's wrestling talk. And talk about wrestling. Tony. Matt. K-J-G. This is going to get real annoying. People are going to start really complaining that I'm whipping this camera you know around. What? Tony, you know what? It is? Here's what you got to do, right? What's that, dude? Just be happy, right? The people watching on Facebook appreciate you. Clearly, you're not tuning in to look at me. That's right. All right. And I can't say for Kevin or Tony, uh, although some would say they are better looking than me. But the, <laughs> Facebook is much easier to access and listen to the show than the fucking rant. Oh, okay. we're starting so, already. So if Tony has to put this thing down, Tony, it, he's not wrong. And, and he's it, not it's not even demeaning or insulting. And it has to face the wall. So be it. You're not tuning in to watch us. You're tuning in to listen. That's right. That's a very, very salient point made by Matt. Because right, I already see fucking Kate in Facebook and I'm already I've already had enough of her a day and a half with her. Oh, oh, my God. It's such a pain in the balls. This broad. <laughs> She she fucking she's worse than a 13. She tweets everything. That's right. Everything she tweets. I believe you. I've seen it. We follow each other. It's unbelievable. All right. So for those of you who do not know, Matt spent a good, I'll say, 36 hours with some of our, our close friends and uh, some of your podcast cohorts on the Wednesday night vehicle. Anthony, definitely, because he was on time, unlike Kate and Danny. Um, because they were late because they went on the turnpike north to get to Baltimore. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait a minute. The, what? <laughs> Kevin, I can't answer that question because I was not in the car and I was already on my way south. So they didn't have any sort of story or any kind of plausible justification as how they could as lifelong New Jersey natives took the turnpike north to get to 695 en route to Baltimore, Maryland. You know what? I didn't ask. I didn't care. You want to know why? You know, Jeff Jarrett had the summer of no worries. That's right. Sunday was the, the Sunday of no worries for me. So I you, gave everybody their tickets. I told Anthony, I told Aunt Money, I said, meet at my house at 830 and bring breakfast. He was there. He, we, he got in the car and we left. Milwaukee, Tom and Idaho Falls. They had heard their tickets. Uh, Kate and Danny had their tickets. Me and Anthony had our tickets. I didn't. I got there early. I don't care when anyone else got there. So you were basically listen. I'm Matt. I'm in this for me. This is my time. Everyone else that screws up their own agendas, that's on them. Exactly. And you didn't care. You didn't want to know. You didn't need to know. Exactly, Kevin. All right. So, again, Matt went to Best in the World Ring of Honor with a guest with Kate and the Mark Order and some friends and very lovely Patreon supporters. You ready? I'm going to blow your mind, Uh Kevin. Uh Uh-oh. Right? Do you know what Mott Spock is? Oh. You're a fucking idiot is what you Italian? Are. No, it's his <laughs> name. It's, it's, <laughs> it's his name spelled backwards. All right. Now I have to I have to do some work here. Am I doing a show with two idiots? I never is knew, bro. Real? I just How, thought, what do you mean? How was I supposed to know that that's what it was? Thomas Cops, the Mont Spock. I don't know that. He says it every week for Patreon, for Christ's but sake. I know. All right. So all he, you're worried about is lives being in your hands, Kevin. All right. Here you go, Tony. And he done he, fucked that up. <laughs> William, William oh, Mercier. Uh, here you I go. got some. Oh, we got heat, baby. Me and the freaking William Mercier Jr., we got some heat. <laughs> but listen, he's Milwaukee Tom. He's Mont Spock. He's. Uh, whatever his Twitter handle is. High five, Tom. <laughs> I have no. He, the guy's got more aliases than freaking Jesus. John Morrison. You know what, Kevin? That was my argument yesterday at the baseball game. Who are you? What's your handle, bro? Who what do you do? You? Right. So then he was like, "You want to know why it's the Mott Spock?" And I'm like, "I don't know what a Mott Spock is." He's like, "It's my name backwards." And I'm like, "What do you know?" Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. He didn't say it like that though, did he? No, because Mott Spock is not Thomas Cop backwards. No, it's, it's Tom Cop. Yeah, Tom Cop. All right, so this motherfucker. Whoa. <laughs> Kevin with the heat. Whoa. I love it. 
All right. So if you're Tom, if you're Thomas Cop, then make it. What would Thomas Cop be back? Or to be like Thumb? Maybe that's why he's just a Mott Spock. Smot Smot Ot Mott Spock is Tom, and then you flip it around. Right. Mott. I'm then, sorry. I got way too angry at the the Mott Spock. He's a very good supporter. I love him. So <laughs> I learned that yesterday. Okay. At the Orioles game. That's good. That's it's breaking news. Uh, fun adventure. Mm-hmm. Uh, LSG joined us at the ballpark. Oh, like, yeah, dude. Love a good LSG. Uh, so that was good. And uh, it went into extra innings, so we didn't get to do Jimmy Seafood. Oh, that's a bummer. It was a bummer because the game was at one. It went to like almost five. Our hotel was pretty close, but doors for Ring of Honor were open at six. And with what? They had said when I bought the tickets, they were going to be taking temperatures. Everyone has to wear a mask, all that shit. I wanted to get there early so we could get in because I didn't know what we were just in. They called them pods. That's right. So you had they gave you a number and a seat letter, a seat letters and a row number. And that was it. But you didn't know where it was. You knew what side of the ring you were, but you didn't know how close you were. All right. So, like, let's get there early because I don't want to miss any of the, the matches. Uh, because I have to see first pitch at baseball games, which is why I was there early. And I have I didn't want to miss any of the, the first matches. Now, you got there for the hour one. Yes. So after the game, uh, Tom and his wife, they just went over to the venue. We went and checked into the hotel and just fresh freshened up. Oh, that's right. Um, and then we headed over to the venue. We got in line. Uh, what, there, do, it, do you mind me asking what hotel you stayed at? It was the uh, Springfield Spring Hill Marriott on in the harbor. It wasn't in the harbor. It was closer to the it was like 15 minutes outside the venue. Was it on we, that long like hotel road? It was just like where it's like a road. Where it was by the hotels. airport. Yeah. OK, so we were yep. um, you know what? I'm not I'll tell you off the air, but oh, we Uh-oh. were very close to the wrestlers. What do you mean, oh, the hotel they, they that, probably stayed at the courtyard. The hotel that they stay at, we were very close I to. Probably shouldn't have said that, but <laughs> so I was gonna say it off the air. Yeah, um, I but I don't know. That's where they stayed. They could have a different hotel completely from where we stayed for the major pod. So, uh, so we went back. We cleaned up. Then we went over to the venue. Uh, it was National Emoji Day, and the lady talked wanted to talk to us about National Emoji Day. Oh, who doesn't? Right. But uh, if you ever see the video. Uh, I am Kevin Garifo. Uh, Danny is Anthony Rusinello, and Kate is Kate. Wait, what? Yeah, I wasn't giving them my real name. What are you out of your mind? So you gave them my name? Oh, bro, it's funny as fuck. So you're good. Don't worry about it. So how how do I see? What do I see? I don't know where it is. That's the problem. So I'm just out there somewhere. You could be. No, I'm out there as you. I'm perpetrating. Mm. So she showed you an emoji. It was definitely a wrestling related thing. She showed you an emoji. She said, "What is this?" She said, "What's this?" I said, "It's fire." You couldn't just say Shining Wizards Matt? No. He's Kevin Garifo? Kevin Garifo. Yeah, we were having a good time. Don't worry, man. She showed the eggplant thing, and I was like, Finn Balor. (laughs) Nice. Right? You know what the octopus emoji means? Jonathan Gresham? Besides that, though, because I said that. Uh, Priscilla Kelly. No, it means snuggling. If you someone sends you an octopus, it means you they want to snuggle. That's the last thing I would think. I of. am gonna start sending octopi to everyone I know. Why? Well, because think, of the suction cups? I haven't. Did, I didn't ask. I don't know shit about. Probably from the eight arms, like wrapping around you, I guess. Mm, but the know. suction cups are kind of in there for good. When well, you guys gonna have some pizza? When I'm fucking ready to have pizza? What? Ah, I- now, fuck you both. Because if no. this was a turnbuckle throwbacks affair, you'd be like, "Oh, fucking Tony, buy the fucking pizza." Look, look, look. Hold on, hold on. You no, said, no, "Do you no. want pizza?" So we say, "I yes." I know that there's pizza there. Don't try and I'll get pizza yeah. when I'm ready. I'm not like fucking Slabo McBlabo that's gonna sit on your couch and get it all stinky, stain it with fucking pizza. Is that cheese. Kevin's new name, Slabo no. McBlabo? No, I'm not what? talking about him. I'm talking about Phil from the Turbo oh, Throwback. Oh, come on now. The he one and only. Listen, they just celebrated their ninth anniversary, by the way, with your boy Moot Spock. I heard it was almost a catastrophe. No, it was fine. Facebook worked flawlessly, and I the audio in, was great. I tuned in a bit. So did I. Did I you heard, call them? I thought uh, I heard you. I didn't call. I was uh, busy working. But that's good for Phil and them. Nine years. They finally got rid of Choppy. Yeah, I think Choppy's done, huh? Good. He sucked anyway. <laughs> oh, what a poor dick. A no, poor he's fucking with his fucking gypsy, his talons, his big old feet nails hanging out. Get out of here. feet nails. <laughs> Get out of here. feet nails. You gross. Well, you we know? have a name of the episode. <laughs> 
How's your jalapeno mango, whatever? It's actually pretty good. It's got a little spice to it, but it's not overpowering and you can taste the mango. I am I am enjoying. I did not want to crack a 32 ounce beverage open because I have to travel. So I am enjoying a very lovely elementary Hackensack ale. Uh, this is a delightful, delightful beverage from elementary. That's that's the lighter ale, isn't it? It's got a, it's 5.5. It ain't no slouch. No, no. But I'm saying I think that was the stuff that I was partaking in when we did our anniversary. Probably because I can't drink. I'm a light beer drinker. I can't drink like heavy stuff. So this was like the closest thing I think he said to it. But this really tastes fantastic. This is really good. I'm going to have it, but I'm probably just not going to partake here. I will dine on his other fine elementary products. So uh, a couple of, if you're uh, following the Mark order podcast on Instagram, and <sighs> put up a Ooh, bunch sorry, of videos. Jesus. We uh, did the hot. <laughs> he just burped all over your show. Of the other fine. Podcast. Fine. But we, Kate uh, does not eat a hot dog with a ketchup or mustard. So yeah, we got to talk about that. By we did way. video. Kate, Took a hot dog and she put some ketchup on one end and she ate it and then she oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I have actually. Uh, I wonder if I could play. Uh, it th- won't. She should really be here for this. LSG took video of her eating a hot dog, but careless whisper played in the background while she was doing it. It's very funny. So she had half a hot dog with ketchup and half a hot dog with mustard. And what did she say was better? I stopped listening after she ate the hot dog. Oh. I lost interest. <laughs> She let me check the Facebook. Kate, what was better, the hot dog with the mustard or the hot dog with the ketchup? Um, yeah. So yeah, that, and then and then she goes, "I want to go. I'm going to get drinks. Do you want something?" I said, "Yeah, get me a drink." And I said, "But don't get very me, specific. Don't get me any hard liquor. I don't want hard liquor because I don't want to get off. It's a marathon. I'm not looking to get all banged up today. That's right. Because we're just at the baseball game here." I said, if they have a seltzer, get me some kind of berry seltzer. Don't get me a blueberry because blueberry is gross. Was it berry delicious? No. And I'm like, or get me. Are like you an buried angry- alive? She was like, get me like an. I was like, get me like an angry orchard if they have the big cans because I saw the tall boys. Oh, that's right. She came back with pineapple mango. I said, Kate, this is the. First. She was like, oh no, I got a good gauge on you. Don't worry, I'll get you something nice. Great. Ah. Pineapple mango is the last flavor I would ever pick because I don't like pineapple and mango. But together, it was okay. All right. Well, there you it, go. it did the job, right? It worked. Yeah. It worked. But then I got up to go back to the bar. That's probably like a $20 beverage. Actually, oh. in Baltimore, probably not. No, it wasn't that bad. And then I went that, back to the bar and I almost started jumping into the hard liquor, but I refrained. Good for you. Yeah. Because I, I, I told LSG today, who we were fucking around, he's like, uh, he's like, they were really glad that you didn't come on this trip. And I was like, I'm sure they are. Yeah. And I was Why like, would he uh, say something like that. Huh? He was joking. So rude of him. He was kidding. But I'm sure he was serious. Well, at least he's and, not a complete dick like but, your friend Brandon but, Kirk, who shits on all the old. But I wouldn't have made it through a, a ball game and a pay-per-view. No chance I would have made it through. No chance. I don't know how you guys did it. Uh, I'm a maniac. That's how I've survived. Uh, Ant Money. About halfway through Best in the World, it just all caught up to him. Oh, the Ant Money uh, indulged? No, like, no, just like oh, this is the day, just and, like being in, heat. being in the sun all day. Yeah. And look, we had third base seats, so by like the third inning, the sun was behind the stadium for us, so we were good. But we, you know, that twelve to twelve to two, you're in the fucking sun. Yeah. I mean, he got sunburned because he had the tank top on. Oh. I got it on my legs. Kate's got it. Uh, I don't know if Danny got it. Oh, well, he's, you- a do- he's a doctor. You can't wear a tank top to a ball game. It was no sleeves time. weekend, he said. Oh, really? Did he put deodorant on at least? Oh, yeah. I hope so. Oh, yeah. Sometimes when you go without sleeves, you don't have really have that protective barrier. You got no, the, the amount yeah. of fun we make of wrestling fans who don't wear deodorant. You better make sure that you're reapplying and making sure you smell nice. So we after the game, we went back to the hotel and we freshened up. Oh. And we went and got we stood in line with all the weird wrestling fans. That's right. Because that's never going to change. <laughs> Yeah, the older we get, like you know, like that was a days and confused line. The older we get, they they whatever what is it? What's a the Matthew McConaughey line? They just keep whatever. It's they the same get, thing. They no, I, I I keep getting older and they stay the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some shit like that. It's, we keep getting older, but the wrestling fans will always be the same. But we love you, you creepy bastards. I love Ryan, dude. This shit is fucking tasty. Nice. Yeah, mine's mine's good. I enjoy it. The when he frick. told me he was giving me jalapeno mango, I'm like, ah, oh. because I had some jalapeno drink when we went away to Cape May. 
back in back in April. It was fucking awful. Like really? I couldn't drink it. This is actually pretty smooth. I like this. That's right. Uh, my you know wheelhouse. Me. I love not, a, I love a jalapeno. Why don't you guys a, just switch then? No, because I like this one. Oh, yeah. well, no, I meant okay. I'm content with my raspberry. Well, the the mango thing is, you know, oof. Yeah, threw me off. Yeah, yeah. I think mango is overused now in a lot of beverages. Yeah, I think you might be right. I think, I think we talked about right. how I talked with somebody about it about how every single White Claw variety pack that's come out since the first one has had mango in it. Every single one. Can't find one. Bud Light Seltzer has the mango. Everyone's got a mango. People like the mango. Mm. Yeah, Chris Catan's a fucking annoying fuck. I hate mango. What about The Rock? The Rock rules, dude. When he was Mr. Peepers or Peabody's or whatever. Oh, yeah. I confused, ma- I confused mango and Peepers. Peepers. That was, yeah. yeah. Wasn't he? He was Mr. Peepers, wasn't he? Yeah. And Peeper and The Rock was like his brother or something like that. Yeah. 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 yeah that's right. The Sandlot? Fuck yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so how was the wrestling you saw? We heard about the ball. You know game. what? I was gonna ask. Uh, I was gonna ask you guys <laughs> how uh, how was Ring of Honor? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Kevin in the hot seat. You know what? I tried to watch it. At least I, I wasn't. I wasn't locked out today. When I went home, I just fucking put it on and I was good to go. And I watched it at work. <sighs> oh jeez. Are you on Xfinity? No. That's why. All right. So I tried. To, I wanted to watch it. Like I was excited. Now, to be fair, you told us to watch it. No, that you had the that you changed your password. Right. And if you had asked me to be fair, I wouldn't have. I don't know what it is. I'd have to look it up on my laptop. I, I didn't have my password. laptop. I asked oh, really? him because I didn't want to bother you. Oh, and, never a bother. I just wouldn't have known it. Yeah. So I sent Tony a text, and this is already after I was blocked. I was <laughs> locked out. <laughs> But I, I was locked out on my laptop, so I thought, all right, no problem. I'll just go to my desktop and put in the correct password. I, that's not how it works, apparently. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, did you, got, did you got, have to change it? No, I would, no problem. I went right home, and I uh, went because because there was a couple matches last night that I felt, and I don't think we think about this when we go to live wrestling events. There's matches that live play better on TV. Right, because you have the people telling the story you have caprice and you have ian riccaboni absolutely and i think the michael bennett uh josh gresham match as good as it was live i watched it it was the first match i watched when i got home because because of the pure rules with the commentary it tells a much better story and there's stuff that we missed because you can't so it was set up like ring outside barricade and then there was like six feet between the barricade and the ring and then there was the first row. Now, this was at UMBC, right? Yes. They really wanted to make sure everybody was far enough away from the wrestlers. I mean, that's kind of wild. Yeah, but you know what? A lot of the wrestlers like went over the barricade in between the high five. They walked, you know, they, they were out there a bit, but they were trying to be as cautious as possible. Also, the setup was really weird. I know they say pods and I wasn't expecting pods, but it was literally just like, we're going to put six chairs right here and we're going to draw on the floor with chalk. <laughs> and then like right where this seat ends, like two feet behind you, we're going to put another set of chairs. Another pod. So it was, and the, the ch- look, Wait, they couldn't even use like gaff tape. They no, used- they just drew with chalk on the floor. And, and I don't know if it was uh, restrictions in Baltimore or what. It was not a full house. There were a lot of empty seats. It's At, it's the first show back. People are still trying to get their bearings uh, because I don't think there's any restrictions in Baltimore. I don't think so either. There were there definitely were when I bought the baseball tickets because when LSG reached out to me on Friday, he's like, can I go with you guys? And I was like, of course you can fucking go, dude. I'm like, this is the section we're in. This is the row I'm in. And then I went to look. And when I buy tickets, I always want row one because I don't want people in front of me. Yeah, that's the move. But when I bought the tickets, I couldn't buy row one. I could only buy row two. So when I went back and helped LSG find his ticket, row one was available. And I was super fucking annoyed. Now, it is the but Orioles. It's, it's, it's the Orioles and the White Sox. And the White Sox are a good team, but it's Orioles, White Sox, and Camden Yards. You're nope. not, you're, you shouldn't have a problem. We didn't have a problem. Nobody sat in the first three rows yeah. of our section. We, had all, we were all over the place. 
Yeah, I saw that. I was, I was like, what? When you first, what I like the first thing on social media that I saw from the Mark Order podcast Instagram it was like, why is LSG like three rows behind Matt? Like, <laughs> like what? And then, uh, and then I, I guess like they weren't there at first. Like there, there were two empty seats in between. You yeah, guys. it was so me and Ant got there first, then Milwaukee Tom and his wife showed up, and then Danny and Kate showed up, and then LSG showed up. And by the third inning, like, like you knew no one was showing up, so we just kind of spread out. Yeah, no, I that's the best. Here. Like, no need to fit, sit on top of each other. And then, like, halfway through the Ring of Honor pay per view, I love Anthony and Danny, but sitting between them, I thought I was going to get smushed to death. <laughs> yeah, how did who put those logistics together? It was kind of just the way we sat down. Mm. So at one point, and I think Anthony and Kate both got up. And I was like, there's got to be a way to unhook these fucking chairs. So I unhooked. Oh, God. So not only were you in a pod, but the chairs were attached. Yeah, but I unhooked them. Oh, fuck that noise. <laughs> and then uh, I had made friends with the people in front of us. They were there to see Brian Johnson. And the lady loved my commentary. <clears throat> I'm sorry. What? You're what? His commentary. Cock. You were doing commentary. I wasn't doing commentary. I was being an obnoxious wrestling fan, but uh-huh. she thought it was hysterical. So they left like. <laughs> she she air quotes she thought it was hysterical that's why they left no like like two hours in they were like we gotta leave we're we know brian because they all like brian johnson like they made their own brian Th- johnson t-shirts um and like when he was out and he was cutting a promo they were going crazy and i was like he fucking paid these people he paid these people and they were howling we had such a good time they were all about 50 dick grabs that was ants thing in a pure rules match 50 dick grabs minimum a uh, hundred open mouth kisses. Those are the limits. I, I, I get it. We're having a good time, uh, but they left. So we were like, fuck it. So like Milwaukee and his wife and Danny and Aunt and Kate moved up to the next row. And then me and Aunt hung out in the back. Were the seats good? Yeah, we were on the floor. We were probably like, I don't know, five rows from the ring. That's a big building. So I'm, surpri- I'm not well, surprised. They, they, they closed out. off half of it. Oh, okay. Um. You can see us during the the first hour. I looked. I couldn't see you guys at all. We were uh we're right next to all the people in the Danhausen. Uh, oh, with all the face, face paint. paint. Yes, there's four of them in a row. Yeah. Uh, Kate is right next to them, so she was on TV a bunch. Oh, I didn't see that. And then there's like pictures, like you can see me during a couple shots, and Anthony and Danny, because the, the and Milwaukee Tom. Someone screen capped it and put it in the Discord. The show was awesome. Um, we have a t- bunch of new champions. Yeah, that was wild. Um, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. We gotta do. We gotta do what we do. It's time for the Shining Wizards pay per view pick extravaganza bullshit. Year three. We're doing Ring of Honor best of the world. What we got, Matt? What we got? What we got? What we got? All right. So we had eleven nice. matches. Oh boy. Fucking a. Did we? We did. It was a full two in the first hour. And then set, uh, nine on the main card. God damn. Woo. I didn't see the first hour, so I don't even know who won <laughs> these matches. Um, Tony, Tony took the weekend here. Woo! Bitches. Yeah. Tony went seven and four. It's not great, but we I'll went worse it. than seven and four. Uh, oh, yes. yes uh, I came in second place at six and five. Woo! Kevin, you came in third place at five and six. Oh, gross. That's because. Once uh, the the whole like the violent unli- the violence unlimited once like that first match happened that pretty much pegged the way the rest of the night was gonna go. Uh, with the standings, Kevin and Tony are now tied. No, <laughs> six months in and we're back to square one, and Matt is nowhere to be found. I am fifteen games behind. We have two pay per views this weekend. Fuck yeah! I will slowly chip a- chip away at the rocks. What's that? I will chip a chip away. Chip away. What's that? Uh, we all lost. Um, we all lost Flamita Rayoris. Yeah. We all lost the bouncers versus PCO and Dan House. That was a surprise. We all lost the main. We all lost the main. We all lost flip. 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 And then flip. I lost the tag match, the tag title match. Very happy at the result, by the way. Uh, and you and me lo- uh you and me lost Deppin. Yeah. Uh, the team uh, title. What's up with that? Was Deppin just like some sort of transitional champ or what? Dragon Lee was kept out of the country because of COVID. So Kenny King defended the title for him at the last pay-per-view and he lost. So uh-huh. Deppin was the TV champion. Dude, you that nervous? match. No, why? Click, 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 oh, click. sorry. 
Bro, I'm like a... I know, it's like fucking Deppin did this and Deppin did that and Deppin did Depp. I'm a maniac. Click, 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 no click, click, shit. Click. Oh, you have no idea. Ask Kate and Anthony about trying to go to sleep last night. I can't get a word in edgewise. They're Wait, so how many of you guys all shared a room? We had a, we had a suite. Sweet. So Kate and Anthony had their own bed and then I, there was like a small partition and then I was on the pull-out couch. Uh, but I couldn't see them, so I made like a big deal about it. Were you John Cena? And I was like, I can't see you guys. I feel so alone. <laughs> There's ghosts in here. And I was throwing <laughs> pillows at them in the dark. I'm a maniac. Then I was just cackling to myself like a maniac. It was a lot of issues. I, yeah. I was, oh, by the time we got, so I'll talk about the show in a minute. So after the show, we were going to meet up with LSG for some drinks. Uh, but then he was beat and I was off in it. On paper, I was in. But when he was like, I'm beat, I'm just going to go back to the hotel. I was like, you know what? That sounds like a really good idea because I just want to take a shower and relax. Uh, we stopped at a Royal Farms and got some snacks. Ooh, yeah, good chicken at the Royal Farms. We didn't get any of the chicken. Ooh, chicken. Because uh, he was like, um, he was like, I'm going to I'm beat. I'm going to the hotel, but I think they're going to Jimmy Seafood. Mm-hmm. And then I looked it up and I think just the bar was open till two. And I didn't want to try and finagle my way into some weird ring of honor after party. Um, yeah, that you should have. I thought you guys wanted to meet the Briscoes. <laughs> oh, Tony. Oh, Tony. What? What? What's up, dude? You met the Briscoes? We go into Dunkin' Donuts this morning. Oh shit! When we're leaving, oh, shit. three people in front of us is Jay Briscoe. Awesome. With his wife getting coffee, he walks in. He sees us. He gives us a head nod. It's a good, good show last night, man. Me, Kate, and Anthony continue talking. He places his order and then he has to walk past us. Uh, he daps me and me and Anthony completely ignores Kate. As you should. Which we thought was hysterical. <laughs> uh, and then he went and waited for his coffee. And I had left my phone in the car. So, like, if I had my phone, I would have got a picture. Oh, but, did uh, Anthony and Kate have phones? No, nah, I didn't want to bother him yeah. once he was over there with his wife. So, uh, But Tony is laughing because at the baseball game, Mott Spock is like, do you think they're doing meet and greets? So I was like, I'm like LSG meet and greets today. He's like, no, nah, I don't think so. Not yet. So Tom's like, oh, I really would love to meet the Briscoes. I just like mark out for the Briscoes. So as soon as I got back in the car, I was like, bro, we just met Jay Briscoe at the fucking Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Mott Spock was in the car. No, no. Mott Spock was, uh, bro, Mott Spock's a maniac. They <laughs> no, dude, listen, to it. they flew in from Chicago, I guess, Friday for the turnbuckle throwbacks. Then they did like city shit Friday. Saturday, they went to MLW in Philly. After the MLW show in Philly, they drove back to New York. All right. Only to wake up and drive to fucking Baltimore Sunday morning and then drive back to New York when the show was over last night. That's because they had a flight this morning back to Chicago. Hey. Ah, That's insane, dude. He had to pull over in Delaware to take a nap because he, he didn't think he was going to make it. Where Delaware? Did... That's like two hours in. Tony, can you adjust the camera, please? Well, what's up? Apparently, it's just my feet. No, it's you. No, it's, it's your, your whole body. Yeah, you're in there. Because if I if I go give you too much head, <laughs> then... then... <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> oh, 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 how are you? <laughs> so, Kev, Kev, you watched the show today. I did the best I could. I watched it all. Okay. But... Here's something. EC3 does nothing for me. Yep. Never did anything for me either. <clears throat> I don't think Ring of Honor was ever the right fit for him. This, like, control the narrative thing that he's doing. I just don't get it. Boring. It really is. Well, it's. I think it's run its course for sure. Because, like, how long can you honestly, like, preach the same exact thing every single week? Did you watch? I mean, he had that thing on fight with uh, with Broski, which apparently was the whole thing was called control the narrative or free the narrative. I mean, I don't I don't know if he's ever actually explained what that even is. It's just like do your own thing as opposed to, like, you know, be a WWE guy. (laughs) But. I think I think he's a big star. I just don't know if Ring of Honor and more so the story with Flip was the right move. I, if he went back to Impact and stayed in Impact, 
I think that would have been a better spot for him. Yeah, I it's uh I don't know, man. He just does not like he looks like a million bucks, but man, when he gets in the ring, I'm like, I didn't think this match was terrible. I just, he just doesn't do anything for me. I can't believe he let Flip spit in his face. Well, you know, flat earther, unvaccinated animal. Oh, Jesus. Really? What? That was all people were fucking yelling at him the whole match. Of course they were. But then if he fucking confronts them, then they're all fucking backing down. Uh, But no, Bacchanal. I picked Bacchanal. I, I picked Flip because he has a world title shot. Yeah. in Philadelphia. <laughs> That's why I picked him. But I guess the story isn't over. Yeah. I picked him just because I thought he was going to win. Uh, Flamita and Ray Oris. De- Demonic Fumita Reyors had a great match to open the show. PCO and Dan Housen against the Beer City Bruisers was good. Dan Housen actually like wrestled, which is not something you've seen. Like he wrestles kind of on Ring of Honor, See, now, but he does like the comedy bit you a lot. EC3, Dan Housen does nothing for me. I get it. I mean, yeah. I know I don't think I don't think Ant Money gets Dan Housen, which made it even funnier because the four Dan Housens were sitting right next to us. <laughs> Uh, and now when they sat, when Dan Housen came out, Danny said to me, you want to see four people fucking go crazy, pop super hard. And I don't know why, but his cadence, when he said that just made me fucking laugh hysterically. Ant money. No, Danny. Oh, Danny. About the Dan oh, Danny's Housens. hysterical. Um, so Somebody, uh, Anthony's in the chat room says by, by here, by everyone was yelling that stuff at him. Matt means it's all we yelled at him during the match. So it was you assholes yelling. Oh, at I him. fucking yell. I was wow. like, how about that flat earth? Dude, I had wow. no voice. My voice is still hoarse. Wait, not wait. And Horson. Someone yelled nice rotation like the earth. Yes, it was not me. <laughs> Uh, they started off the, the night with the Briscoes against PJ and Brian Johnson, which makes sense because the Briscoes got people fucking fired up. What did you think of the chicken pen match? Whatever they had Oh, the family, the farm fight. I didn't I didn't like it. Oh, and you know what else I didn't like that Ring of Honor did? They did a, a segment to set up a match between Vincent and Matt Taven at the next set of tapings in Philadelphia. But you couldn't I couldn't understand. What what so. Taven comes out. He, they have this whole setup, uh, and he calls out Vincent. Here comes Vincent and Vita and Dutch. And, and I thought that was a pre. I thought that was a segment that they were showing clips from before, like a, a before time. They did that during the first hour, during the free ah. the free preview, whatever the fuck they call it. Um, <sighs> and Taven was like, "At Philadelphia, me versus you, one last time. Win, lose, or draw. I'll leave Ring of Honor." And then Vincent's like, nah, man, you know what we're going to do? That's what you want to do. We're not That's doing right. what you want to do. That's right. You're going to put up your Ring of Honor title shot against me in a cage. So it's not like a like Taven's. I don't think Taven's leaving Ring of Honor. I think that was just a setup. I didn't grow that beard for nothing. So it's going to be Vincent and Taven in a cage at the Philadelphia tapings in August for Taven's ROH world title shot. Ooh. And then they beat up Taven after. Oh, boo. That Vita Von Star. Ah, the, the redhead, right? Yeah. Isn't she the one that got kicked out of the uh, the women's tournament? Blasphemy. That's another thing that I'm absolutely disgusted by. Talk that. Don't be stupid. She makes a lot of she makes a lot of appearances on the Indies still. Yeah, no, yeah. she does. No, but the the big look. <clears throat> Uh-oh. 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 Wait a minute. Hold so on. I, Hold you, know, on. you put one down. I got to refill. While you All right. Well, it's your... best in the world. It's a big deal for Ring of Honor. It's their first time back with fans. Um, We we are, you know, we're being told we're going to get a lot of big surprises, and they have a big surprise in store for us that night. Okay. So a lot of, we're, you know, a lot of things are circulating. Davey Richards was at MLW Saturday night. He clearly has a huge tie to Ring of Honor. People were saying Chris Hero. Long shot, Brian Danielson. Ooh. Long shot, longest Ooh. shot in the world, right? Ooh. But you're looking to make an impact. You're looking to, and we don't know what his status is. With all due respect Uh-oh. to the women of honor. Oh, <laughs> here we go. I could not have cared at all. About Chelsea Green. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I understand that. I understand that. I get it. Right. But 
she's a great get for the Ring of Honor women's division. However, the, I don't think that I. I don't think this should have been at the pay-per-view. Do it on your fucking week by week. Do it on your weekly show. I feel like they dropped the ball. Now, granted, this is before the pay-per-view ended, and still, I got more questions than I got answers. Maybe that's maybe that's why they wanted it done that way. But uh, yeah, I don't. I'm just. I don't care about Chelsea Green. Is Chelsea Green on your shirt? Yes. Oh, Carrie pointed that out in the chat. Oh, yeah, this is a look. The, I got this in my pro wrestling crate. Feel the shirt. It's super soft, bro. Ooh, I like that. It's the only reason why I wear it all the time. It's Sexy. a very soft shirt. Sexy. I don't even see your nipples. Covers you up well. Yeah. Well, just go on uh, the Insta social media. My nipples are everywhere. Kevin has not touched his seltzer. Oh, it's 32 ounces, bro. Like, yeah, but he's going to drink like eight beers. Yeah, well, that's what he does. Very good point. <laughs> It's a very good point, by the it's way. It's nice to see after 18 months you haven't learned anything. <laughs> Math. Science. Te- All right. So, Matt. Technology. Chelsea Green did absolutely nothing for you. Well, Correct. Uh-huh. All right. Would there have been anyone that was available that would have done something for you? Yes. Who? 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 Like in the women's division? Yeah. yeah. That oh, was- no. No. Oh. oh okay. So, th- no. I-, I feel like we were damned if we're due... We're damned if we don't for this. Look, and again, it's a great get for the, the for Ring of Honor and for the women's division. They're really loading up that women's tournament. It looks great. Just to take this time and to have her come out and say she wants to be in the tournament, but she can't wrestle because the Maryland Athletic State Commission won't let her, let her wrestle with a broken arm. She's going to be there to watch the tournament. Like, I just felt like this is something that was better suited for like week by week or Ring of Honor TV. I think it was... I agree with you because I don't think Chelsea Green... Like, if you're not familiar with her, like, there's no chance you're familiar with her from WWE or NXT. Right. No, no chance. Now, if you're diehard, which I'm assuming Ring of Honor fans are, you might know her from Impact as the hot. That's when she did her best work. Right. And she was when she came out. She was the hot, the hot mess. mess. Yes. Yeah. So there's a chance that you might know her from that. But that was so far removed. That's over. That's like three plus years ago. So. Unless you're following her social media and her podcasts and this and that, or you're just a diehard Chelsea Green fan, there's a good chance that A, you have no idea who the fuck this person is, or B, it's like, all right, I get it. She's a name. She's somebody. She's been places, but her career has taken so many detours due to injuries that if she wasn't always hurt and and she had a decent run with WWE and subsequently still did this appearance. I think people would feel a lot differently, but yeah, I agree. I don't know what I can't get mad at them because no one knew what was going to happen anyway. Like this wasn't a planned thing. Right. This is just a, something that they threw in. Well, I was, so I, you, I guess you got, you got enough to use the restroom. So speculation was Davey Richards cause he is back at MLW and he was in Philly the night before. And he's clearly tied to ring of honor. It's where he made That's his right. name. So to have him come out, um, when he came out, he didn't, Oh, but there's a lot of, a lot of buzz. The, the names that were being thrown around were Davey Richards, Chris hero and long, long shot. Brian Daniels. Wait, so did they promote? No a surprise. No. Okay. No, but uh, some wrestling insider said that that they might be company, showing up. Certain companies are making huge moves. Yeah, and I understand how a Chelsea Green signing is a huge move to their women's division. I just felt like this is best of the world. This is the first time Ring of Honor has been back in front of fans, and I don't know what the contract situation is with Davy Richards, but I do know he was in Philadelphia the night before working for MLW. So even if you had him come out and challenge Jonathan Gresham or Roosh Pre, God. But then, so so we're kind of all over the place here with this conversation, which That's is fine because we're talking Ring of Honor. So I want to jump to the end. We have a new Ring of Honor world champion. Mm-hmm. Okay, Bandito. That's right. He beat Roosh. You surprised by that? I kind of am. I am surprised. Um, but are they going to have him wrestle maskless? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think they are. But then Kate brought it up. Andrade says he has a surprise for Wednesday night. Uh oh. Oh, and they're boys. Roosh and him are boys. That's what they started. They started uh, LIJ in, yeah. in Mexico. So 
him not being the Ring of Honor champion maybe gives him that free pass. But LFI is still a thing, so I don't really know. And well, yeah, because they finished the show after we get in their heat back, right? And then if you saw the show, I'm pretty. It looked like Roosh had his shoulder up. I also spent most of the night yelling at Todd Sinclair because I felt like he did a terrible job refereeing. Oh boy, he did not look tag team action. Who I didn't know who the legal man was half the time. You were yelling at him. Oh, I'm screaming at him. Do your fucking job, Todd. Jesus, what? Don't you, bro? It was chaos. No tags. Illegal man, legal man, this pin, then you're going to enforce the tag and the pin. You're not going to count the pin because there's a blind tag, but then there's there's no counts. There's no five counts. And then you're going to let Roosh push you around. This is Ring of Honor or AEW? This is, I, who knows? I miss I miss the blind tag. So we had a new world champion. It was very nice. They beat him down. The show went off the air. Then Rouge, uh, Bandito got the microphone. He gets, he said he's very happy to be the champion. And everyone cheered. And he took pictures of people and high five people. Um, we got a new TV champion. Dragon Lee beat Deppin in a fucking awesome match. Yeah. What match? There was a match. I don't think it was the maybe Brody King and Jay Lethal. Where Riccoboni and Caprice were just going fucking nuts. When they were, look, I, I didn't watch it yet because when I came home, I just I knew I had like such a window yeah. before I had to leave again. So I just started. I at, had to watch it at work. So I was kind of. So I just started at uh at the Pure Rules fuck, match. Fuck, yeah. But man, when Lethal and King or when King was just fucking ham using those ham hocks to yeah. fucking smack Jay Lethal in the chest. I could only imagine. Bro, he beat the shit out of Jay Lethal. Dude, that he his finisher that I guess it's not like a cradle pile driver, but it's like he like he puts him on his shoulders. It's like a shoulder breaker type pile driver. He doesn't get him he doesn't get him high enough. Like you would think that he would get somebody to to drop him on their freaking head. But the way that he does that was a scary as shit, but you could tell that it was safe as shit too, because he did it twice and it just like it almost looked like you couldn't get him up, but it's Brody King. He's a monster. So you know that wasn't the case. It's just that match was insane. That like I stopped did and Jay Lethal wears a singlet now, Matt. I guess so, yeah. All right. He's changing it up. He's Mr. Franchise. Bro, he came out and I don't know if it came across right on the TV. It looked like he was on the verge of tears because the fans were there. Super cool, super like he was like very emotional about it. I get it. Like yeah. you, you don't work for the last year without fans, you know. And that's I'm really looking forward to September when we hit up uh, AE Dub. Yeah, I'm excited for that, man. Uh, Josh Woods beat Silas in a hell of a match. They Dude, tore, it, that tore it down. Fi- can we talk about that finish? The fucking suplex through the tables <laughs> to the outside. Yo, wrestling is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> In the, in the statement of the night, actually, that should be the name of the episode. Um, what else? Uh, what, what did I want to bring up? Oh, the six man tag. Yo, fuck Dalton Castle. I'm back on that fuck Dalton Castle. Oh shit, bro. The t- the t- the the Eli Isom and Dak wanted to get the pin, and he's breaking up the pins. He's breaking up the pin on his uh, Eli Isom is on his team. He's pinning someone from Shane Taylor promotion and he's breaking it up because he doesn't care about the win. He's here. I'm here for the people. You and the boys need to fuck off, Don Castle. Oh, he's got to keep the boys in line. How do you how do you make more money for the boys? You get the wins. You get the ta- the, the, the six man tag titles. This guy's out of here fucking around, prancing around in some rip off the radio Gaga by Queen Radio Goo Goo. Yeah, he's held to, he's still held together like he's made out of fucking graham cracker. Oh, I know what, what, I, what I wanted to bring up, but go ahead. But I love Shane Taylor promotions. Oh, those guys Shane are Taylor. all good. They're fucking great. Good look, like re- in wrestling terms, good looking. Like each one of them could be like a star. I don't know their names, so I'm sorry. But each one of them could be like a legit, like big time player. Well, Shane Taylor. Well, I know Shane Taylor. And then Moses and Khan are the soldiers of savagery. Dude, those guys are some scary looking dudes, man. Yeah, they are. Khan is a fucking. Is Khan the one with the curly Q hair? No, uh, Khan's the thinner to fuck Jet, like a yeah, oh, guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. He's got it. I like them both. And then Milwaukee Tom suggested maybe this match is where they recruit Eli Isom. I like that. I like that, too. Has I, Isom always worn that mask? No, this is like a whole when when we did the restart, he kind of he kind of reinvented himself. I didn't think so, but and he looked great. He fucking put Shane Taylor on his shoulders. 
Holy shit. I'll tell you what I loved and what I probably watched the most was Mike Bennett and Gresham. Yes. Which was incredible. I'm still kind of hazy on the on the pure rules. I know we made kind of made some jokes about it. You guys made some jokes about it. But how you so you're only, you you're allowed to punch, but only like once. You get one close fist punch. Yeah. Three rope breaks. That's right. I knew that. Title can change hands on a count out or disqualification. And if anyone interferes in the match, they are fired from Ring of Honor. Yo, I don't think it can be stated enough how freaking jacked Jonathan Gresham is. That dude's like a freaking, you know who he reminds me of? Like off the top of my head, like Ivan Putsky, the Polish power. Yeah, it's like he's like a small, he's like a bulldog. He's small in stature, but his upper body is like a freaking brick wall. He's like the, he's like the octopus power. <laughs> like, like that, the, the, I think he's awesome. I never realized he was that jacked. He's not very big either. Like height wise. Yeah, height wise. That's what I'm saying. That's why he's like Ivan Putsky to me. And Mike Bennett looked great. Yeah, he did. Great. Yeah, guy. he did. That was a, that was. If I had to name my top matches, it was Deppin and uh, Dragon Lee, then the Pure match, then the World Title, um, then the World Title. Wait, yeah, what? Title. Pure? No, wait. You said World twice, I think. Did I? TV, TV, Pure. Tag? No. World. World. Six man tag. Six man tag. All right, cool. Dickinson and Homicide won the Ring of Honor titles in a. Uh, fight without honor. Ooh, Dickinson, the dirty daddy. Uh, Gresham, Gresham had to do double duty. I have a list. Oh no! Trying right. my memory. All right, yeah. Dick, uh, Gresham had to do double duty because Tracy couldn't wrestle because he got hit by a car, like shoot hit by a car, and Lethal got the dog shit beat out of him. So it ended up being Rhett and and Gresham. Uh, yeah, I, I I was surprised by that. Because I'm used to seeing Gresham wrestle twice, right? But just not when it. So I was like, all right, I guess this is an angle. But I didn't, I didn't realize it was real. Uh, yeah. The I guess the Maryland Athletic State Commission didn't clear Tracy. It's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, overall, Had- I thought it was a great show. I give it a, a solid B. Uh, EC3 and Flip really like. I think it drained you. It didn't drain me. It just was like you go from the Briscoes opening. And then it kind of was like, boop, go get your popcorn and your Skittles and your seltzers. So I didn't, I didn't hate it that much. Ah, I, I, now, again, I didn't. This might be a match where when I go back and watch, watch it on TV yeah. live, it was just flat as an Asian's ass. Oh, easy. What? At least I didn't say their face. What? Really? What? Oh, back boy. in studio. I don't like this. What? We're back yeah. in studio. Dude, I'm on. I've been a maniac for the last 48 hours. So. No, all right. My yeah. voice. See, even Facebook beeped out what you said. That's pretty wild. How does fate? You have closed caption on Facebook? Hell yes, yeah, son. Does it say the curse words we say? Watch. Shit balls ass. Is there an actual Fart. beep? Do they actually beep it? No, it, they, they censor out the um, the closed captioning. So what do they censor? Ass or Asian? They, they censored. See? Something balls. Ball. Is there an actual? Oh, they bleeped out the shit. So fuck. Asian ass. Asian face. I don't know. It probably has, it's probably censored out ass. We'll see in a second. Oh. This is so cool. Technology. Science. So but yep, yeah, Asian ass. They they beeped it. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. But I had a great time. It was great to meet Milwaukee Tom. Uh mm-hmm. and I, Milwaukee Tom. Oh, that's right. And Idaho Faith. All right. So what's I what's his deal with that nickname? She's, she's from Idaho. Idaho. She's from Idaho. But mm-hmm. she's Tom Spock's wife. Yes. Where do they live currently? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Uh, makes sense. Idaho is a hike from Wisconsin, though, isn't it? I didn't get into how they met. Oh, how'd you meet, eh? She was like, Idaho. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> that's somebody's wife. Right, uh, and I had a great time with uh, with Kate and Anthony and Danny, and uh, it was just a great trip all around. LSG was awesome to hang out with. Um, it's a good brother. Yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> it was a very, very good time. And we made sure that everyone had their phones charged up so they could document uh, our outing. Yeah, Kate says she's going to put some sort of compilation video together. Yeah, that's be nice because she doesn't have any proof that she went and had lunch with Dick Zicky Dice the other day. 
How did that happen? I haven't the slightest idea. She just call him up, yo, Zick man, let's go get dice. Let's go get dice. Let's go get lunch. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't know, but there's no evidence of it ever happening. So. Probably didn't. I think I, I kind of think it did. She had a tea party in her room. She put her little stuffed bears there and said, Would you like some more tea, Tiki? And Zicky, and she's like, Yes, I would. And Zicky, Tiki, Tacky. Zicky, Whatever. Tiki, I can't tiki. fucking talk tonight. You know, uh, what? Now, have you avoided MLW spoilers, Tony? Yes, I'm doing yes. my best. Because yes, first yes, of all, yes, I don't yes, even yes, know yes. when it's going to be on. Okay. But I heard it's not like tomorrow. Okay. It's on Wednesdays. No, but the Battle Riot I'm talking about. Well, battle, there's no more drafts. Battle Riot's oh. not till like the end of the month, right? Yeah, but they'll probably have some, they'll probably have a new show this week. I know Blue Meanie was there. That's all I know. All right. He's always there. It's Philadelphia. Yeah. They always bring him in for shit. Yeah. So, yes, I am. Tr- I'm trying to avoid it because I've never really seen a Battle Riot. All right. All right. Remember when we tried to bring Blue Meanie in for some? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the hotel I paid for, Blue Meanie. Oh. I shit all over. He blew you <laughs> off. <sighs> so we're completely mum on the spoilers. I'm not looking to spoil anything for anyone. No, I would don't. like not to. Yeah, don't. but if like by next week we can do it, maybe I don't know. Might all be- right. Well, just so you know, uh oh, next week's guest. Uh oh, canceled. No, <laughs> no, no. He's part of a new faction. That debuted at MLW. Oh, he's going to be. Oh, then we have to say it then. Sorry. No, you could say. I mean, everybody knows Slice Boogie's going to be on next week. We announced it last week, right? So. Oh, I did see this. I, uh, <laughs> come on, MLW is my wheelhouse. Please don't give anything away. All right. Yeah. So just so you know, if it uh, doesn't happen this week, then you know, just do your fucking research, because you have to talk to him about it. Yeah. And I really did that. I'm not. I'm not even bullshitting you. I really did have been trying to avoid. No, it's fine. You should. But wait, do we have to talk to him about it if it technically hasn't happened yet? I mean, the news is everywhere. It's not like it's hidden. Yeah. Oh, so we have to pretend. I like- think even such and such tweeted about it. Did he get new tights? People- oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. Fucking a, dude. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, the, the people involved tweeted about it. All of them did. Yeah, you gotta know. All? Tell I'm me the faction. I'm pretty sure the MLW please, tweeted about it. Please tell me he joined Contra. Please tell me. <laughs> now, now I kind of want to tell. Tony. No, he did not join Contra. Oh, Contra. Tony, we're telling you. No, Kevin. I mean, come on, we're Kevin. You. Let me see. Hold on, I want to see if MLW tweeted about it. I'm sure. What's his nuts? Probably did already. Anyway. Court. We're, we're telling you, Tony. Court power. Past guests of the show tweeted about it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. They're, go- they're going back to Philadelphia. How about that, Tony? Past guests of the show. Well, that doesn't look like they tweeted it. Somebody did. Wow. Kevin, you got big news you haven't told us about? I got big news? Yeah, from the Twitterverse. What do I have big news about Twitter? I Now, listen, I didn't know. I, apparently, I guess this, I mean, this is a big thing for you. Michael K follows you now on Twitter. Oh, yeah. The voice of the Yankees. Why would you not bring that up? dude? I don't know. It's not relevant. It's not wrestling talk. But that's a big deal. Oh, it's my buddy. Fucking A, man. It's my dear good personal friend. Matt, oh. who's the most important person that follows you in your life? Like my personal nobody. I don't Oh the other oh yeah, the podcast would probably be. But I mean, like, yeah, like nobody follows you. It's like, oh, that's pretty cool that someone so follows us like, or follows me. For the wizards or for my personal account? Either it... or. It's an well, open the, wizards the wizards is, is everybody. Cool. Wizards is cool for anyone that follows us. Uh, my personal account, I don't think anyone follows me. That's important. It's got a L- does LSG follow you? I don't know. <laughs> Matt, the, Matt has lost interest. Millionaire you Matt. killed Matt. You know what? I don't know who follows me on Twitter either. Oh, oh I don't want to shit my pants. No. I'm sure Why, you, I'm sure, um, uh, Tony, I'm sure it won't take long to find out. I burped up pizza jalapeno. Kayla That's Sparks cool. follows me. Well, there you go. That's a big name. She's she's on her comeback tour, by the way. Yes, yeah, she is. Fuck yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Chris Van v- uh, Chris Van Viet follows me. Oh, there you yeah, go. For real? I think he follows me too, yeah, actually. Me, for real. Yeah, me too. Uh, let's see. Perch follows me. Ah, oh, Rough Perch. Yeah. He's a fun guy. Uh, oh, somebody also commented that I guess Eric Bischoff was talking about Ice Train and possibly brought up our interview with him. On 83 weeks? All yeah. right, all or right. Ad free shows. No, I, I think it was it, somebody mentioned 83 weeks, and it wasn't like he said, like, oh, it was from the Wizards, uh, but it was an interview where it was like 
Yeah, it came from you guys. Uh, okay. Well, I'm on. I'm on. I'll probably watch or listen to that episode tomorrow. Because I guess that's is. Did he do a show on Ice Train? Like what? no, he probably did a watch along for. He's doing a, he his episode that dropped today is a watch along of of Nitro from July fifteenth, uh, two thousand uh, nineteen ninety six, and it's probably. Um, Ice Train's probably on it. They probably wrestled the Steiner brothers. If I oh, right fuck. Fire and Ice. All right, it's I'm it's probably to... Fire and Ice versus the Steiners. I'm going to have to tune in for that. If I'm not mistaken, I could be way off, but... Come on, Eric. Give us a plug, man. I thought we were boys. What's going He's on? He's saying happy birthday to you. That's the fucking greatest moment ever on the show for me. Talk to Matt about the Wonder Years. That's right. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. I might shit my pants. All yeah. right. Well, if, while Matt's going to shit his pants, we got plenty of other oh, wrestling man. things. You don't to have to take about. a break because I got to get up. No, we got to take a break, man. It's fucking after eight o'clock already. Well, I don't know what the fuck you're planning on, but I got some pizza over there on my name on it. It doesn't stay. Oh, fuck off. That's technology. What do you want from me? You want to tickle my taint while you're doing that? But Kev, before I take any kind of break, what do we need to do about this time? Well, first, I want to thank Elementary Brewing Company for supplying us with these great beverages. I have not tried my seltzer yet, but I'm drinking a great George's lager. Fuck yeah, dude. Which is a nice little 16 ouncer here, baby. 5.5 alcohol by volume. Don't drink and drive. Drive safe. And after that, back after this. We know you love shopping at Amazon, and we also know you love listening to The Shining Wizards. That's why you're hearing this commercial right now. But were you aware that you can combine the two, do all your shopping, and support the show at the same time? Well, of course you can. Instead of going to Amazon.com, go to Amazon.ShiningWizards.com and make your purchases the way you normally would. You're going to get the same great low prices, and a portion of whatever you purchase is going to go to support the Shining Wizards. How great is that? You, by purchasing anything that you normally would anyway, is going to support us. That's a win-win in my book. So from now on, when you shop at Amazon, go to Amazon.ShiningWizards.com or click the banner on our website and do all of your shopping with the Shining Wizards. Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, and because of the crisis which is even now developing, this radio station will remain on the air day and night. This station and hundreds of other radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country are pooling their resources through an emergency network hookup to keep you informed of all developments. Horns up, everyone. When on the Shining Wizards Network, be sure every Friday to check out Radioactive Metal. Radioactive Metal is one of the longest running podcasts on the interweb. And every week we bring you a fist full of metal, including interviews with all your favorite artists, discuss all the metal news, and feature the best tunes on the air today. So grab a Lemmy, join your cool Uncle Snowy, and co-host Aaron in the pit. You all recognize symbol of excellence in sports entertainment broadcasting from the current to the way back. Join the impact play of Phil Rea and the Portuguese Man of War Choppy for the Turnbuckle Throwbacks Wrestling Podcast. Live every week on RantEMRadio.com. Get all our episodes over at iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Audio Boom, Google Play, ShiningWizardsNetwork.com, and TurnbuckleThrowbacks.com. Are you tired of being told what to think and believe by Hollywood elites and politicians who just don't care about you? Tired of not getting the truth when you watch the news? Tired of trying to figure out what pronoun to use? Tired of mob mentality when all you want to do is think for yourself and make up your own mind? That's where we come in. This is Justin. And Vince. Your hosts of Inconclusive Breakdown. We are a weekly anti-PC podcast bringing you entertainment and current event news without any spin. If you want to truly stay informed on what's going on in the world, then give us a listen every Sunday anywhere you get podcasts, at least till Zuckerberg and Twitter Jack deplatform us. And as always, we're proud members of the Shining Wizards Network. Tired of the PC police telling you what you can and cannot say? 
want a show that travels back to the 80s and 90s where the badass hosts have beaten down cancel culture on three separate occasions and carried on to gloat about it? Since 2013, The Midnight Jury is that show. Travel back to the malls and arcades, pop in your VHS, and join us where the 80s and 90s return from the dead. Conan, tell them where to find us. WLWstudios.com, home of the Midnight Jury podcast, hosted by Midnight Mike and Calvin Brody. Also available on all major podcast platforms via the Shining Wizards Network. And join in the conversation on Twitter at Midnight Jury. What's up, wrestling fans? You want something awesome? Check out Wrestling Night in Canada here on the Shining Wizards Network. We're three Canadian metalheads uniting for the love of pro wrestling. Every episode, we go over all the latest news and special events with the odd unique interview as well. So grab a cold one and check out Wrestling Night in Canada, eh? Are you tired of being uninformed? Together, we can change all of that. Experience a podcast like you've never heard before. You'll gain knowledge, have some laughs, because we believe this is the last AEW podcast you'll ever need. Join us every Wednesday night at 10.15 p.m. on RantEMRadio.com and Facebook Live. We can also be found on all major podcast forums as part of the Shining Wizards Network. So stop listening to inferior AEW podcasts and bring a new podcast into your life by joining us. Join the Mark Warner Podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Mark Order Pod and on Facebook.com slash Mark Order Pod. Don't forget to tag us on social media and use hashtag join the Mark Order because if you don't find us, we will find you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. My name is Thomas, and what's your name? Uh, I'm Alan. Alan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're brothers. That's right. Yeah. yeah well, the mother, same mother and father. Your room was. Oh, we shared a room. Shared a room. We we shared a room. Thought I knew your face. Yeah, we go way back, mate. Yeah. yeah. We should do a podcast then. And we have. We do do a podcast. We do a podcast. What's it called? The Roadcast. Roadcast. Yeah, that was planned. Yeah. What are we doing? Well, we cover all different things in the world of pop culture. We're talking about comic books, we're talking about professional wrestling, and we're talking about movies. Go back and watch classic retro wrestling events, the likes of WWE, WCW. And if you do like that, you can check us out on Apple iTunes, also on Podbean, Anchor, and on Podknife. Also check us out on Twitter, at The Broadcast. That's B-R-O. Okay, it's, really hey, the ending. No, it's all right. Good on you. Yeah. Instagram also at the broadcast podcast. Remember, we don't spell it with a C, we spell it with a K. It's all right, mate. Take it easy. Oh, we spell it with a K. We spell it with a K. Let me play some music. I haven't played some music in a while. Oh, oh sorry. Hold on. We, are we back? Yeah, I'm a back. bad man. All right, guys, you want to take this time to thank everyone that supports us. This is Shining Wizards Kevin reading the Twitter, uh, the, the Patreon supporters who I have no idea who any of them are except the last one. So let's start. Let's start with the two Miss Spookists. You don't have right? a list? I don't, I don't have a list. I'll help you out, Kev. No, no. I'll, I'll do it. I got it. Oh, boy. I want to thank two Miss Spookists who uh, spent all weekend with Shining Wizards Matt and the Mark Order podcast. Let's next go to Carrie Cowling. Uh, fellow Major Mark, let's try Anthony Rusinello and Danny Rusinello of the Mark Order podcast. Well, one of them is. <laughs> yeah, don't and, give, don't don't include Danny, please. No, I won't. And uh, the AOP of the SWP, Kate the Great Hensler, who annoyed Matt to no end this past weekend. You know what? If uh, it, honestly, I. Probably annoyed her and Anthony more than anyone. Poor Anthony as a child, and he was expecting to get away from the weekend from it. And he he, he, he adopted you. Oh, I made up for it in fucking in in. Space. I don't know. Oh All my right. God, the queen of the Shining Wizards podcast, uh, Kathy Hummer, the Humsky, if you will, and of course the king of the Shining Wizards podcast, 
supporters is Mr. Manio Kratzkogu. Mano, Man, Mano Kratzo. Uh, let's see. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? You need some help? Yeah. All right. Uh, we also want to thank, of course, Ryan Arthur over oh. at Elementary Brewing Company, elementary.com. Thank you tonight for the brewskis and the seltzer skis. Kevin's already five deep, so don't That's worry right. about that. That's the right. Sean's, Sean Toe, Sean Colejo, my boys, Brett Simonello. What do you hear? What do you say? Kate the Great Hensler over at OnDeckIC.com. You got shit to promote. You got shit to plug. You want to eat a hot dog with mustard on one side and ketchup on the other? Kate's your gal. Matt Garifo, no relation to the cake. Oh, J G. I don't forget about him. Maddie Mellinger, Christine Friesendorf, Mark Parloni. Happy birthday, Mark. Kenny Hawsey, Mr. Scotch Drinks More. Jay Cop, the big cop of pump. Congratulations on nine years of turnbuckle throwbacks, Jay. <laughs> Which he's been there for six months of. <laughs> That's fine. He's still there. He's my man. He's my boy. He's the best thing on that show. You mentioned the Moot Spock, the guy that spent all weekend driving Matt nuts looking for the Briscoes. Michael Hammond, David Henry Bauer III, his pal Antonio Horseman makes experimental music at harvestmanrecords.bandcamp.com. Dot com cop jesus matthew birch is he the guy that fucking does the the the, the, the birch the, birch birch the collections doesn't he is that him no the true prince of pro oh Ber that's right bergman is the lebron bergman, james Braden Berger, and that's it he's the, the lebron lebron james ryan schlong with a little tip of the schlong we got our boy roll our our boy brendan heaney and kevin last but not least wait how are you gonna do this i think we do it first and then he follows up with the the new additions. What do you mean? No, that's already done. Oh, yeah. No, Kevin. Kevin does do his thing. The, wait, did you plug Antonio Horseman? Yes, because his pal is he's making experimental music. It's David Henry Bowers' pal. Oh, OK. All right. Good. So, guys, oh, I don't know if you've heard this before, oh, <laughs> of course. but lives are going to be. <laughs> oh, shit. God, you <laughs> motherfucker. You shit on his shit like his plugs. You shit on my good read. Lives, stuff your face with pizza. <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> Lives are going to be <laughs> William Mercier's. <laughs> I know what you mean. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> pepperoni face. Pepperoni face. Fuck yeah, I love pepperoni in my face. In your face. Fuck in yeah. your face. You can join us for as little as $1. Patreon.com <laughs> slash podcast. $3 is your best bet. Cause you get four bonus episodes oh every my. month. Do you, can you hear yourself? I can yep. hear him. Matt, what do we got on tap this month for the people that we got to release? Uh, we're going to do our crossword puzzle. Fuck yeah. From inside the ropes. We're going to do a piece on Victoria, Lisa Marie, and we're going to do a Canadian stampede uh, gimmick. Oh yeah. That's I actually watched it last week. Oh, what memories, dude. And I didn't realize that it's like almost like, like the 20 something year anniversary of it. I didn't even know that. That's pretty cool. Almost yeah. 25th anniversary, actually. Yeah, that's what I meant. I know. I was there with you. That's right. Uh, I do want to uh, mention the Mark Order podcast again Wednesday nights. We have a good time. If you're not following us on social media, uh, Mark Order Pod, check it out. It's me, Kate Anthony. Also, Kate is doing something with uh, Sean Ross Sapp tomorrow. Jesus. Some kind of uh, money in the bank prediction show. So if you want to support Kate, Kate's uh, predicting WWE. Uh, yeah, Kate's, she's Kate's apparently gonna... paying attention to Raw tonight. Oh, sucker. All right, Kate. Kate, we need to have a talk. Look, it was we've come to the realization myself and Ant Money, uh, the Millionaires Club. Um, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Millionaire Matt and Ant Money. Come on. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Uh, money, money, Kate money. is just using us as stepping stones to get she further is. in the wrestling yeah. industry, and I've accepted it. No, I refuse to do. Um, what? You're, you're dead to me, Kate. Wow. Whoa, Jesus. Wow. That seemed that was harsh. No, it's all right. All right. Um, I know we have tons of games and stuff uh, that we want to play. Top five lists. Uh, AEW sold out. Yeah. Yeah. All out sold for out. all out. <laughs> Let me ask you guys a question here. Oh, <gasps> oh Jesus. All right. Christ. You. How do you a burp that big? How do you not know is coming? <laughs> Not used to drinking 25 ounces of seltzer. Exactly. It's so tasty, though. Oh yeah, my but God. if it was a cup of cum, he'd be all about it. Oh, gargle, gargle. Or a gargle. Fal falafel. <laughs> More like falafel. How does the largest wrestling company in the world forget to check 
a contract. A who contract. Gi- who gives a shit? Who cares? You don't think it's the least bit funny? Whatever. Fuck them. I don't give a. I mean, to Tony's point, not that crazy. But if it's thirty days or ninety days, he wasn't coming back. Right. But the Ugh. timing couldn't have been worse because they're on their way to the pay per view in Chicago. Honestly. When you guys were fucking saying like, hell yeah, fuck yeah, last week, I had no idea what you were talking well, about. Well, because we didn't spoil it. Well, that's why I was like, what the fuck are you idiots talking about? And Matt's like, oh, we having two conversations. I'm like, no, I just have no idea what you two gaggling gallopers Dude, are gaggling about. Probably not since Moxley showing up have I reacted that insanely. Like, was it really that TV. big of a deal? To though? me, it was. Was it a big deal to you? Yes. So at the beginning of the show during the Cody QT Marshall South Beach hey, hey, QT Marshall The lights went out And then they came back on They're like we're dealing with weather issues down here Were they in Georgia? No they were in Miami oh, Fuck you blew the joke dude What's the joke? The, the lights light? went out in Georgia? Yeah, they- oh god son of a gun <laughs> <laughs> So then later when Arn is out The lights went out again And they just kind of played it up like we're ex- yeah. They were like we're just like, oh, it's not fast. We got I'll some give fire. him credit for that That's very clever and that when the lights clever. and he was because it's been mums the word and everyone thought that everyone released was on a 90 day yeah. release. Nobody expected him showing up. The last thing I, ex- I expected, like literally the last thing. I expected. And to his credit, he's still selling the eye injury, which I think is fucking brilliant. Yo, I thought I was like, when I saw that, I was like, is he doing a completely new gimmick? And then I because I, I, I don't watch WWE that much anymore. So I forgot that he was even doing an eye gimmick there. Can I ask you, what was the eye gimmick? Seth Rollins, I think, did something. And Buddy Murphy. Him. And Buddy Murphy. And then Buddy Murphy tweeted at him after he debuted. Great debut. How's the eye? Oh, and Murphy. he and he, oh. just, he just responded, Matthew, because that's but <laughs> now he's <laughs> Buddy Matthew, name. right? Yeah. And he, but he's on his 90 days, but you know, that's, I thought it was huge. I loved it. I thought it was, I don't think it could be understated enough how, and Eric Bischoff kind of talks about this a lot. Surprises are still what makes and breaks like wrestling TV shows. It might not break the business or make the business, but it makes your TV show. So that was just like, yo, I, like I yelled, I was in my, my bedroom drinking a nice, you know, elementary brewski and uh and i literally yelled holy shit like out loud like literally out loud <sighs> and people could be like why because alistair black hasn't been that you know used on tv all that much he was he hasn't even come back from his super like new hype videos yet but if you know like and that's what aew's audience caters to they cater to the people that know wrestling so you know Tommy Ann, you know Alistair Black, you know how good he is, you know the potential is unlimited. So for him to be there and to be put right to something with Cody, it's I I lost it. I lost it. It was awesome. I had just gotten home. I had just sat down in front of the TV. Great surprise. And to Kevin's point, like if you love NXT, odds are you really enjoy AEW. And when they took Alistair Black off of NXT, it was kind of like, well, this sucks. Yeah. yeah. He worked a lot of great programs with, you know, even though I know people are down on him because of the weirdness, Velveteen Dream. He was a former NXT world champion. Like Alistair, and then he went to the main roster and yeah. he was just kind of like, threw him in a makeshift team with Ricochet. And yeah. And then he kind of just gets just lost. Just because in the they shuffle. were, in a, I think they were, in the, were they in the Dusty Rhodes classic? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So then they decide, okay, put him on the main roster together, which never should have happened but you know it was funny too they brought up uh champa and gargano at the same exact time and then those guys were like pretty quick to go back well no because they demanded to go back i'm pretty sure gargano said no i'm i don't want to be here i want to go back i think yeah i don't know i don't know if there's any truth to that but it would make sense i'm pretty sure gargano said like we nxt needs us here still maybe they both did it i'm not sure and that was the problem with the contract because from what i've been reading i don't know this for sure NXT contracts have a 30 day no compete. Yeah. So he was still working under his NXT deal. I yeah. believe that's what I, and I haven't had a chance to like uh, d- dive deep into it, but I believe that was it. it. They never transferred his contract over to a WWE contract, yeah. which is weird. You, you would think that they'd all be the same contract. No, Nah. I think, I think their thinking is not everybody is that comes to NXT is going to stay in NXT. So they don't want to hold them up. Like I get the people that they sign from like tryouts, but like, if if you're like an 
a Gargano or an Aleister Black or, uh, you know, a Killian, a Karrion Cross or, oh. or somebody else like that. You feel like that would be like a legit straight up WWE contract. No, it might also be like a thing where like that talent is on the fence and they're like, you know, Triple H is like, well, here's what we'll do. We'll sign you to a contract. Right. And it's if you decide you don't want to be here, you only have to wait 30 days before you can go back yeah. out on the indies. Maybe. I don't know that you're probably right. And I, I, I have no I guess Triple H is the one that's that does the NXT contracts as opposed to I mean, I'm sure Vince McMahon doesn't Vince McMahon probably only just signs it because he's Vince McMahon. He's not the one that brings people in. No, he probably just has a stamp with his name. Yeah, and he just. Yeah, exactly. Or they probably just have somebody legal sign the contracts. You know? I mean, yeah, Vince McMahon, I guarantee you Vince McMahon doesn't actually sign a contract. I guarantee that. I, I don't I don't guarantee it, but that wouldn't surprise me. Like, he, I guarantee like he doesn't sign. He's not the one sitting there like, all right, who is this? Uh, freaking uh, Ricochet. All right. I'll sign him. Like. Can we, is there. Can we can we talk? Can I ask you a question about Baltimore? Sure. Did did oh you bring a suitcase with you or did you trash bag it? <laughs> you fu- motherfuckers. I brought a suitcase. How many? Oh, no, I know. I know. It's Kate and Anthony texting Tony. Yeah. They want to oh. know how many pairs of drawers you brought with you. How many pairs of underwear? Three no, pairs of underwear. Shorts. One. Was that the one you were wearing? What do you mean? So like you wore a pair of shorts to Baltimore. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Did you have another pair of shorts in your bag? No, I said one. <sighs> What do you mean gross? What else did you have in your suitcase that you couldn't put another pair of shorts in there? All right, so I may have dropped the ball on packing. <laughs> mm. I started packing and I took out my suitcase and my wife was like, really? And I'm like, well, it's a nice suitcase and I'm not fucking putting shit in a garbage bag. All right. So, so I put two pairs of underwear, two pairs of socks, two T-shirts, a toothbrush, deodorant. My Manscaped ball deodorant and a, the pair of shorts I was going to wear. All right. So there's a tale of two mats here. I feel like <laughs> that's hobo mat. That's like we're getting on the train. Oh, are we still can bag on a stick? So that's my question. Does hobo <laughs> mat still exist? Oh, yeah. I felt like you may have left hobo mat behind a long time ago. No, nope. there's no hobo. Look, I just and then I also forgot to pack something to sleep in. Well, wouldn't it just be the boxers and whatever T-shirt. Well, that's right. I didn't go T-shirt. They already saw me without my shirt on. So I said, "Fuck y'all," and I was in a completely separate room, sleeping on old rickety cricket that fucking awful fucking pull-out mattress. <laughs> rickety cricket. All right. So, if you didn't have the nice suitcase, would the garbage bag still have been an option? No, I've never okay. done a garbage bag. Okay, I didn't know. I would have done a book bag, but then I have to empty out my workbook bag, and then I'd have to put all the shit back in there okay all right that's all right i didn't i didn't know that the garbage bag thing was a myth i didn't realize packing a bag would be so much fucking like no it's work i overpack i was so souped up and i also thought i was gonna buy a bunch of shit and i barely spent any money while i was down there like i didn't we walked in there was a fucking super long line for merch i'm like fuck this i'm not standing in line for merch Mm. yeah there's a line for merch yeah as soon as you walk in the doors there was a line for merch I'm not questioning the fact that these guys can't sell merch. Like a line implies that it's like, ugh, I don't want to deal no, with it. Was it was a line. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I didn't do sit in a line. Yeah. And then I forgot to pack like a pair of basketball shorts to sleep in. So I took a shower. I put my shorts back on mm-hmm. and then I got under covers and took my shorts off and I just slept in my underwear. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Why did you feel the I'm need out. to? I'm why not. did you feel the need to put the shorts back on and then take? Well, them I off? didn't want Kate to see me walking around in my underwear. Didn't she sleep in a bed with Anthony? No, she slept in a bed, but not with Anthony. Oh, you said Anthony and Kate were in a bed. They were in beds. We had oh, two beds. Two beds. Gotcha. Wait, you put the Rusinelles in a bed together? No. no. Wait, Danny, everybody had their own bed? Danny didn't stay. Danny decided he was going to drive back after the show. Oh. So gotcha. Kate had a bed. In between them was the alarm clock, the thing, the yeah. stupid Bible in the drawer. Hmm. Someone, not Matt. Spilled ginger ale all over the alarm clock. Not Matt. Yeah, I'm sure. Nope. I didn't have a ginger ale. I had a nice tea and a ghost threw it across the room. It was empty. All right. 
I'm learning so much about this. Dude, you can't stay any. I'm a maniac. I was literally a maniac last night. I wouldn't shut the fuck up. Then I just started uncontrollably cackling because when the sleepy timer went off and the TV turned off, I was going to uh, jungle crawl across the floor and just grab their feet while they were trying to fall asleep. All right. So, Matt, were you intoxicated? No, I had three drinks all day. I was overtired and I was just a goofy. A goofy. Yeah, a lot of times overtired will get you in that state. Hmm. Been there. I don't think I've ever seen something like that. Oh, dude, you would have you would have wanted to murder me. Anthony, I would have. I, first of all, I wouldn't have shared a room. I would have gotten my own room. <laughs> what was worse, your behavior this night or your behavior when you shared a room with Phil and Mega Powers? Um, <laughs> I would say this night. Really? Yeah, because I was kind of hammered that night. And I may have said some unpleasant things. I did not. <laughs> you? Throw, I did not throw a cushion, Kate. That was the ghost. I asked them, do you think this room is haunted? And they didn't believe me. And then a ghost moved my shorts and the towel oh, and took a cushion and threw it at them across the room in the dark. Spirit was with you. And Kate didn't have no problems when I threw a combo at her. She fucking ate that shit right up. What kind of combo? Pizzeria flavored. Oh, delicious. That's good stuff. That's great stuff. Did she catch it like a seal or did she like pick it up off the floor? Or? No, I got it right like in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, yeah. Kate. No, that just sounded I mean, bad. We, I, no, yeah, it we, was a very good chance that it could have actually landed. People are good at that. You know, yeah. like when you're at the hibachi and the guy throws yeah. the fucking zucchini at you. And then you get the zucchini in your mouth. Yeah, right. It wasn't the right shape for Kate. So it wasn't, it <laughs> oh, come on now. What? On. She ate a hot dog like a cute a fucking. She ate a hot dog like it was corn on the cob. <laughs> she <laughs> really? ate it sideways. Yeah, Ew. it was weird. I have the video. Right. I'll show you the video. Kate, oh. I'm going to need you to text me. right. And now. then no, this Kate, morning, this morning, she was kind enough to go down to get breakfast for me and aunt while we slept. And she Together. brought us back some delicious Jimmy Dean sausages. Sausage. Yeah. Did she? <laughs> but she also brought back a banana. All right. Bananas are good. Who's asked if she stick it up yours or <laughs> that's protein. <laughs> Bananas are good food to eat the, for breakfast. I thought, I thought I should have cleaned out the I thought it was way. potassium. It's protein, too. I think potassium mostly fiber, too, right? It's definitely potassium. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of potassium. Oh, yeah. So yeah. much proteins in a banana. Uh, oh, <laughs> and uh, to be fair, wait, in, in a banana or my banana? <laughs> I was also. And just so it doesn't seem you guys like, got to stop drinking. And just so it doesn't <laughs> seem like they were like, oh, Matt, you have to sleep on rickety cricket. Kate was kind enough to offer me her bed where she would sleep on rickety cricket. And Anthony offered to share a bed with me. But I said, no, I'll sleep on the yeah. pullout couch. I'm always that guy. And then they said, I'll how was that. it this morning? And I said, I'm afraid to move because it hurts. I don't care who I got to share a bed with. I'll share a bed. With no, I don't, I don't share beds. I don't give a shit. Unless, you know, there's stuff happening. But right. um, Kevin's homophobe. But no, no. I'm just a- weird about my personal space. Right. Like there's one time where like I literally booked the room and Janella crashed with me and I was like, ah, Janella, take the bed because otherwise we're going to share the bed. I'm not sharing a bed. I slept on the couch. Dude, how do you not share a bed with Janella? That's a fucking story. I'm not sharing a bed. Would you what? share a bed with Janella? Sure. I've shared a bed with if a I was drunk dudes. and I just happened to land there. Yeah, I'd probably share the bed. Did Ellis, do you have a sleepover with you guys or no? No, he was at his hotel, but Again, we were going to drink afterwards, but then he said he was going to go crash. And I'm kind of like, I kind of feel like I'm okay with that because as so we, no one drank afterwards, there was no after party. We went to the Royal Farms. We went back to the hotel. I took a shower. Kate took a shower. Anthony showered before we went to the wrestling event. And then we just kind of just unwound. Oh, I would have pissed you guys off then because I would have wanted to fucking drink all night. You know what I'm saying? Well, I didn't mean to steer the ship back in that direction. That's a great uh, direction, Tony. I understand, but we're talking you know. about the adventures of Shining Wizards Matt here. There was a one I cannot wait to go on another adventure. I can't wait for them to go back to Baltimore again. Oh, Baltimore, my old well, there's a cicadas still there. No, there was no cicadas. No cicadas. Three weeks ago there were a whole lot of cicadas. A whole lot. All right, what else do I got? Any news or notes? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? I don't, know. I don't know. Oh, uh, found out that uh, Mr. Wonderful Paul Underf passed away. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, Two Mr. weeks Wonderful. in a row, man. Two weeks in a row. Who was last week? He died twice. No, it was Del Wilkes last week. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Last week we lost the Patriot. This week we lost uh, Mr. Wonderful. And and Chris Youngblood died too. Oh, for real? Yes. Well, yeah. Jay like Jay had passed away a long time ago, right? Yes. Yeah. 
That's that's a shame. But yes, and Terry Funk should be dead soon. Well, we're all waiting for that celebration to happen, right? Tommy now. Dreamer begs to differ. Yes, Tommy Dreamer said, "Y'all need to leave Mr. Funk alone. He's uh he's not in bad health. He loves everyone talking about him." Direct quote from Funker: "Currently sitting in an assistant living place with my thumb up my ass, whistling Dixie, but I don't remember the words." Hashtag forever ECW. Mm. So forever. so Terry Funk is or is not. Seems like he's okay. I trust Dreamer. But yeah, the sad news, Mr. Wonderful passed away today. Uh, it was confirmed by his son. Uh, he had been battling dementia. Uh, fast Past guest of the show, legend. We talked about what got us into wrestling a couple weeks ago on the show. And uh, one of my first memories was the cage match on Saturday night's main event. I know Tony was a huge Mr. Wonderful guy. Oh, my God. The story between him and Hogan spanned like a year and a half, two years, almost three years. Yeah. And crazy doesn't get I don't think it gets the appreciation the, the appreciation and like the long the longevity of wrestling is how incredible of a story that was and how much that even put Hogan into another level. Yeah, it do, you know why it doesn't Kev? because the story with the macho man eclipsed it and that was and Andre, too, afterwards. probably. Yeah, yeah, the Andre. But it was it was more. It was more the mega powers being built up after that. And that thing caught like wildfire. And it's, it's a shame because in the shadows of that is a really excellent story with uh, Orndorff and Hogan when they were friends, then they became enemies and they beat the hell out of each other. Then they became friends yeah. again. And I think if you're like my age or younger, you probably don't appreciate it as much as you should, but you got to go back and watch it because, because you're right. The macho man Hogan thing was like right kind of in our wheelhouse. Then you had Hogan Warrior, and then you had like so. And I didn't mean to downplay the Andre thing. No, no, I, no, no. It was there. It was it was monumental. I didn't think you were. But in terms of like an arc that lasted years, like Andre came out one day and challenged Hogan. Yeah, and that set that ball rolling. Yeah, like just like that, he was a bad guy. But Hogan and Orndorff, it stemmed out of the whole Piper thing. And he joined up with Piper and then Piper left him for dead. And then, you know, like he looked at Hogan and then maybe this guy's OK, you know, and then, you know, uh, uh, sells him out to the Heenan family, the fucking pile driver and the three on one. You know, the fact that Hogan, Piper and Orndorff, I believe, and I think Iron Sheik, too. Yeah. All went into the Hall of Fame together. Oh, yeah. That that most of that class was the first WrestleMania. Yeah. It was Orndorff. It was Hogan. It was, it was, uh, I think Sheik and Volkoff were on that one too. Yes. Volkoff was with Sheik. And Piper was on that one too. I think. Oh God. I think it was Piper and Hogan at the same time. All right. Matt, Matt, Matt's doing the legwork for me. I'm like 99.9% sure. Yeah. It was, it was a, it was a who's who of WrestleMania one. And here that went in. If you, if you need to get uh, some kind of context for Orndorff and Hogan, the big event, yeah. Is on, oh, yeah. is it's on YouTube at least the the Hogan Orndorff match that that was in front of what 60,000 74,000 fans in yeah, Toronto at the, at the Expo Center yeah August 28th 1986 uh and that it was all built around Hogan and Orndorff it's unbelievable to watch uh so de- it's on YouTube check it out i don't know if it's on the peacock and the peacock's really starting to chat my fucking ass so well at least you don't have commercials on your peacock so there you go well, I can't get any of the new fucking content because they keep fucking saying it's going to be out, and then they they take it down. Oh God, that pisses oh, me fuck. off. Fuck, they did it with Luger, didn't they? Just they did it with Kevin Nash yep. this week yeah. too. Fuck, man. Uh, two thousand five was Hogan, Piper, Orton Jr., Mister Wonderful, Volkoff, Sheik, Jimmy Hart. Yeah, it was all. You said Piper, one, right? Guys. Yep, Hogan, Piper, Orndorff, Volkoff, Sheik, Bob Orton Jr., Jimmy Hart. Listen, WWE fires Giancarlo and the fucking all the documentaries go to shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't, how about that? I don't understand that. Like, how could you promote Kevin Nash? I mean, the thing's in the can. It, I, I, obviously, the shit was all done. The thing with Luger's been done. Why did they say, I understand why Luger, I, I understand, I don't understand why, I understand that what they said. But why Nash? Was there any explanation as to why Nash was? As of right now, no reason has been given. Wow. Yeah, I don't I don't get it. WWE Network News noted this is the third time in recent weeks that a previously adver- advertised show. Yep. Uh, it started with June. WWE Untold the Nexus. That was supposed to air already? Fuck. I want to see that too. Fuck. 
love the Nexus. Nexus Somebody eight. must be actually be watching these now and like not liking something. What's well, not good. to like? I bet you they're look as That's much a, as you want. You can shit all over the current WWE product. You might not be into it, but these pieces, these documentaries they do, there's none better. No, they're the best. They you really know, are. You know what they need to bring back too, which was great from the 24 seven days, the round tables they used to have with Jim Ross and, and mean gene. What were they were doing? What table for three? Yeah, but, but this Before was better that, than that. No, I, ring. I know, yeah. but I think it was they, like JJ Dillon and fucking dusty Rhodes and everybody's just sitting around having drinks and smoking cigars. That was fantastic. It's that shit, fucking dude. Nick Khan. He doesn't think people give a shit about the history of wrestling. He just wants to fucking be all Hollywood. Yep. I think. It's yep. Awesome. No, you're a hundred percent on that. hundred percent. Then there's, Guys like us, who all we feast on is the history of wrestling. And all we do is love and respect and want to hear the stories that, yeah, maybe we heard somewhere else on a shoot interview or we heard it somewhere else, but they don't produce it many better than WWE. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, Matthew. Matt, can I give you a quick this and that on the NWA? Yeah, yeah. Hit me with a quick this and that on the NWA. So Sal Renauer gets his TV title match, but as we know, Colby Carino beat him up, and he wrestled, and he was hurt. And then near the end of the match, as the Pope is finishing him, all of a sudden, Tim Storm is like, yeah, he's got a broken collarbone, or his collarbone's cracked or some shit. It's like, uh, whatever. Who had a broken collarbone? Sal Renauer. Oh. Because Colby Carino <laughs> fucked him up on the apron last week. Remember? Yeah, he did. Two weeks ago. Dropped him on his dome. So I got more info on the champions. Is this camera's still on me, by the way. We... Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'll move it over yeah. to Matt. I'm sorry about that. No problem. I don't, I don't mean to let your fucking beauty hog the camera. Actually, Oof. I'm going to put it on myself. Yeah, I mean, you're, some... you're a handsome guy. I know. I need some camera time, but That's I look right. all greasy because the light's like right on my fucking bald spot. Greasy. Right yeah, like fucking like somebody rubbing Earl on my head. Anyway, so the champion series is eight champions are going to be involved with 20 combatants. It takes place on July 27th with only one prize and only on power. So I still have no fucking idea what it's going to be. Right. They're probably bringing in champions from other leagues. I don't know. Whatever. We'll find out as it gets closer. I hate Austin Idol. I think I hate him more than you do now. Ooh. Came out with Tyrus, Jordan Clearwater, and Black G's, and he was fucking babbling for like five minutes. I just wrote, this was dog shit. So long story short, Pope is getting Tyrus for his seventh match. If Pope wins or doesn't, if Pope doesn't lose, he's got his magic seven, and he's going to be able to challenge Nick Aldis if he so chooses. But he's got to get through Tyrus, who gets another title shot. Whatever. Sky Blue Thunder Rosa. Oh, versus- why? Whatever. He beat the Pope in a non-title match at the pay-per-view. He's entitled to a title shot. No, 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 no. Because the Pope had gone the limit with him before. So Pope, va- Pope vanquished him in an actual title situation before. Mm. Right. But then they had the non-title match at the pay-per-view, right? But that was a false count anywhere. No DQ, some nonsense match. Still beat the champ. It was unsanctioned. Aha. Aha. Anyway. All right. Uh, I like this match. Sky Blue, Thunder Rosa versus Smiley Kylie and Serena Deeb. Serena Deeb is a great fucking heel. Holy shit. If you guys have the means, please watch this match. I know she's doing the heel shtick on uh, AEW right now, too. But watching Thunder Rosa give her shit because she doesn't belong there. And then Serena just acting like the fucking cock of the walk. Fucking amazing, dude. Amazing stuff. So that goes on. That goes on. That goes on. Oh, Oh. Your, your boys, Jack Stane and Crimson comes out and uh, Jack Stane's like, we're brothers, but I got to tell you something. And Crimson's like, what the fuck? He's like, you know, what's going on? And all of a sudden, your boy Slice Boogie walks out and Crimson just fucking puts his head down, shakes his head and walks away. So now there's heat between the War Kings. What's going to happen? I don't know. Why Slice Boogie with Jack Stane? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe uh, maybe Mr. Boogie can answer some of these questions next Monday night on the Shining Wizard Wrestling podcast. We got Hawks Airy and El Rudo teaming up to take on La Rebellion and Brat Homicide joins them for a six man. Got a lot of got a lot of homicide. This the week. newly crowned Ring of Honor Tag Team Champion. Yes, wow. absolutely. Scared me, Tony. Brat. Crado says he loves being a champion and the most important thing is to win. But Aaron is starting to see the light that winning matters. And he does. He doesn't say he respects him, but he says he sort of likes him. So there you go. Aaron Stevens comes out with the broken chair again. Kind of funny. He's actually very good on commentary, by the way. 
so yeah, so we get the six man. The six man was great. Lots of flip flop and a flying, and it was lucha rules. So if one guy powders, the next guy comes in, which actually makes for a great dynamic. It was a great match. The fucking uh, the rebellion and homicide wound up winning that one. Um, main event: Chris Adonis, JTG for the vacant national championship. Did you get a chance to watch this one? No, I haven't seen any NWA. Okay. <laughs> I heard the Booger Eater was on commentary, though. Booger Eater was on commentary again, which was great because Velvet was not in for another match, which is a two for two. That's well, fine how does me. he do commentary with a mouth full of boogers? Mm. He pushes them off to the side. It's like dip for them, you know? Washes them down with a glorious elementary raspberry cider. Ding. Anyway, so did you guys know that Trevor Murdoch was one of the original dups? I didn't know that. It's like Sanjay's brother? No, no dups. like the Dup brothers. Dup brothers from ECW and TNA. Was he? Yes. Fucking A, dude. Soon he was like he was like 20 years old. Soon to be NWA world champion. You're out of your fucking mind. That's right. So anyway, so the finish is JTG comes off the ropes. Adonis gets the master lock. He manages to break out. But when he gets when he gets loose again, Adonis slaps it on again. And Fred Rosser, who said he had JTG's back, as JTG was going out, he told the referee, forget it, ring the bell, it's over. And the referee rings the bell, stops the match. And awards it to your new and once again champion, Chris Adonis. And then all Fred Rosser kept saying at commentary table was, you know, I had to do what I had to do. He was out. I had to do it. I told him I was going to look out for him. So then JTG just kind of walks back with him. And we don't know. Is there going to be heat between Fred and Jay? We don't know, man. I like how they call him Jay the God now, too. That's awesome. But uh, oh, I like that for JTG. Yes. Fantastic match. Oh, that's sick. Bullshit finish. But it's interesting to see what's going to happen now with Fred Rosser and JTG. Oh, Freddie Rosser. Maybe they got respect. Maybe because he helped him out. I don't know. But good ending to that. Yeah. So a lot of bullshit with your boy fucking uh, Austin Idol. But uh, a lot of a lot of redeeming values on N- NWA this week. Why is he my boy? Because he's your boy. You love fucking Austin Idol. I don't like You're going to go train at his wrestling school. I know you are. I will do no such thing. You like taking your shirt off around other guys. So there you go. He's your idol. There you go. It's not my idol. Nothing about him appeals to me. Uh, All right. Oh, that's fair enough. All right. What else you got? Uh, Kevin, Impact. We are on the the big home uh, stretch here to... uh, Slammiverse. The Slammiversary. This Saturday night, right, is the big uh, PPV on FIT. That's it, baby. First Slammiversary. Line, line. You got Kenny Omega, Sammy Callahan. Mm-hmm. A lot of great wow. matches, actually. Yeah. my uh, impact? I'm and sorry. I don't think we have even scratched the surface, although we're very close to the show. I think some people are still missing a match, a.k.a. my dear good personal friend, Brian Myers. I don't think he has a match, even though Matt Cardona came back and destroyed him on, on Impact this past week. Sammy Callahan, Kenny Omega, a big multi-team tag team match with the good brothers follow tjp um uh fuck 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 i'm an asshole um <laughs> god who the else is in that match uh follow no, follow yeah follow on tjp good brothers it's also um it? joe something no jake something's not in that match it's violent by design. Oh, that's right. The Good Brothers, Rich Swan and Willie Mack. Yes, Rich TJP, Swan and Willie Falaba. Mack. Yeah, I'm not uh, feeling Rich Swan and Willie Mack anymore. Fire and Flav will defend the titles against Rosemary and Havoc. Yeah, the new, uh, uh, the new uh, freaking uh, this, uh, whatever they are. Uh, William Morrissey, <laughs> W. Morrissey will face Eddie Edwards. That's that's actually been a really good story because William Morrissey is playing this thing where like he saying that wrestlers aren't there for each other so they played up this whole thing with kojima and how like uh you know where was where was kojima when he beat up eddie edwards or uh something like that so now you're gonna have william morrissey versus eddie edwards which is a i think william morrissey might be front runner for comeback wrestler of the year by the way all right i can dig that uh i saw the gail kim diana perazu thing Yes. Who right. who do you think is Deanna Perazu's opponent? All right. Well, I thought it was going to be Chelsea Green. That's not the case, clearly. I don't know the contract situations of the released WWE people. But if I had my druthers, it would be Ruby Riot. I don't know if she's allowed, but I'll still go with that as my guess. 
unless they do something weird where it's actually Gail Kim. It could could it be Mickey James too? I don't know. I Mickey got ja- I got ja- I got one for you. I'm gonna throw it out there. Can I try to guess it? Give me a hint. She's owed her title shot. Sue Young? No. Smiley Kylie. She left them high and dry. Yeah, I kind of heard that she was possibly considered for that, too. Did she leave them high and dry? No, she left them because she had personal stuff, and I totally respect that. But listen, if it's Smiley Kylie, I'll be all good with it. I got no problem. Right, with that. Because, I'm a big fan. Look, we heard why she left, right? But if you go back and you look at that pay per view and that promo, Deanna Praz cuts a promo on her, thinking she's coming out. So this, may, maybe they set it up like the door is open for her to come back. Like maybe they were like, you know what, go take care of yourself, because it, it makes sense for the story. Deanna's beat everybody but her. But does but does Smiley Kylie coming in? I so. Are you figuring that whoever comes back beats Deanna Peraza or whoever comes in beats her? I think so. All right. Does Kylie, does Smiley Kylie, after being gone for so long and the way she left, does that do anything for you? It doesn't for me. I think it's a nice feel-good story and it allows you to reset the women's division. I'd rather have Deanna retain to be honest, if that's what they if, if that's what they do, listen, I think it'll be a great moment. I think it'll pop people. I listen, I'm I'm a big smiley Kylie fan, so let it happen. If it happens, it happens. I just don't know. Again, I'm on the outside looking in. I have no clue who's available and who's not. But what's what's left after that? I think Ruby Riot would be the best if it's if it's possible. Ooh. I just said I said it five seconds ago. He wasn't paying attention. He was deleting emails. Oh, okay. Ruby Riot is my person. <laughs> or if Mickey James can still work other places, I think that or it could be Gail Kim. Ooh. <laughs> it could be it could be Gail Kim or it could be listen, if it's Smiley, I'm all for it. I don't know, Matt. No, I agree with you though. Smiley Kylie should not win that match. If if she's back, great. Shouldn't be Deanna Perazu. Yeah. Hundred percent. They pulled that shit with the fucking women's tag titles a couple of months ago or a couple of weeks ago, and I fucking hated that too. All right. Well, we got a big slam anniversary coming up this Saturday. Oh, baby! So uh, the go home show is Thursday night. Right now, Impact is giving us uh, Doc Gallows versus Fala versus Joe Doring versus Willie Mack this week uh, to set up their big tag team match at Slam anniversary. Um. Plus eight man tag X division, Josh Alexander, Chris Bay, Trey yeah. Miguel, and PD Williams take on Rohit, Ace Austin, Madman Fulton, and Sure. Here's the one thing that I might have an issue with. It seems like it's the same eight people in every X division match. And I get it. You can't yep. have you can't have a million people on your roster, but every single match that's a multi-man match, it's the same people. So that's like my only one criticism of of impact. Like I feel like I've seen this match. I'm looking at it right now, the slam anniversary match. Trey Miguel, Ace Austin, Josh Alexander, Chris Bay, Rohit, and PD Williams. Love them all, but I feel like they've just been it's those are the only guys in the division. That's a fair point. Those are the only vegetables in your stew. It gets kind of boring after a while. That's right. Uh, that is all I have in impact notes. Kevin, anything from impact you want to speak a bond before we move on to our next uh, adventure here? Speak a bond. No, man. I think we, I think we covered it pretty good. Uh, Don Callis and Kenny Omega. Um, I don't know how long this thing is going to last. Hopefully not much longer. Kev. Do you think, I mean, does Sammy Callahan beat Kenny Omega? And is oh, that I the, hope so. And is that the end of this, uh, this relationship god i hope so i hope they'll slam the door and fucking don Callis's dumb head oh he'll be going to then you see him every wednesday on aew well, good bye see you later felicia bye felicia bye that's felicia it. that's what i meant well just when you think you're done watching slam anniversary and you go oh good there's no more picks this weekend oh you're fucking uh-uh. wrong money in the bank is sunday money 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 so a couple couple developing situations. Bailey tore her ACL and yes. she's out for nine months to a year. So uh Sonia Deville has granted Carmella 
Oh, boy. the shot against yeah. Bianca Belair, but that's taking place Friday night at SmackDown. Yeah, and then, they, then they put Liv Morgan in. Uh, Liv Morgan's in the Money in the Bank, as is Natty. Good. Natty and there's still one more woman to be entered into the women's Money in the Bank. The men's field is complete. Wait, wait, wait! Before you go there, Natty's still tag champs with uh, Tamina. Yes, but they lost Friday night to the debuting team of Shotzi Blackheart. And of course they did. Fuck off. Who's, I'm sorry. Keep going. Who is Shotzi's tag team partner? Tegan Knox. No, Ember Moon. Ember, Ember Moon. Moon. There you go. Uh, Tony Storm is also going to be debuting on SmackDown. They've been vignettes there. Kev, she got a big hiney. Who? Tony Storm. A lot of girls. She have got big a, no. She got a big ass shit locker, dude. All right. She's also bisexual. Who? What's she gonna buy me? And uh, I Sex. thought she was with Juice Robinson, but I gotta check that. Um. So your men's money in the bank is all straightened out. It's is Rick- Otis in it? No. Fuck. Fuck, they fucking fucked that up big time. They of shaved, course they bro. Did. They shaved his beard off. He looks stupid. It's the dumbest shit in the world. He looks like Francis Buxton grew up. This is your money, men's money in the bank. Yeah. Ricochet, John Morrison, Riddle, bro, Drew McIntyre, Big E, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, Shinsuke Nakamura. It's a great field. Come on, Kev. It's a great field, but it sounds like it's gonna be dog shit. Why? Oh. <laughs> I think it's listen, we always talk shit, but we always agree that most of the times their actual events produce good, good outings. I don't know, man. Big right? E, Drew McIntyre. Like, these are some big fucking dudes in a ladder match. All right. Kane's been in like a million. I understand, but Kane's a fucking big red idiot. Oh, oh. Remember when The Rock called him a big red retard? Yes. Never could get away with that these days. Of course you can. Why not? It's very offensive, sir. Kevin, uh, Kevin, Matt, nobody watches Raw anymore, so who gives a shit? Yeah, 1.4. Okay, you know Good Oof. point. Yikes. Well, I know somebody who's watching Raw tonight, you fucking Sean Roth, Sass, Simp, whatever the fuck your name is. <laughs> Hi, how you like them apples? Evil, <laughs> evil Tony is here. Oh, Evil Tony. Fuck yeah. God, there's got to be something in those seltzers that are just... Salsa, 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 <laughs> salsa. salsa. <laughs> must, be a, must be impossible for a Spanish person to order salsa or not get salsa. You have the salsa after the salsa. Uh, your uh, your must yours must have been a lot stronger than mine. It's delicious. Mine's gone. Uh, oh, you finished yours? Yeah, I feel great. No, mine's getting hotter. I, I should have probably mixed it up, but then it would have went psh, mixed oh, it up. It's a jalapeno. The jalapenos Ooh, are probably all at the bottom. Yeah. Who's the comedian that had the jalapeno on a stick? Jalapeno on a stick. You know who I'm talking oh, about? What the oh, fuck? Jeff Dunham. There you go. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this is what Money in the Bank looks like for Sunday. Roman Reigns against Edge. <laughs> Bobby Lashley against Kofi Kingston. Rhea Ripley against uh, Charlotte. We already went over the men's money in the bank, the women's money in the bank. Asuka, Mm -hmm. Naomi, Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross, Zelina Vega, Liv Morgan, Natty Nightheart, and one more wrestler to be determined. It's going to be fucking Snooker. Riot. No. Snooker? Yeah. Brother. I think I already know who I'm going to pick for this one. All right. Well, um... What? Come on. Jimmy Uso got another DUI. Good for him. That's, so a, that's, that's a not fucking the, that's not good stuff. It's a real go getter right there. Why he's not fired, I don't understand. Mm. Do you think firing is gonna make his problems go away? No, but it's gonna make him go away because God forbid he fucking kills somebody. I, he's not learning his fucking lesson doing what he's doing right now. I mean, can't argue that. I'm not I'm not unsympathetic. However, this is not this dude's first rodeo doing this shit. And he's got the money and the ability to not do this shit. You understand what I'm saying? I'm picking up what you're putting down, brother. 50 miles an hour through a red light. He's lucky he didn't fucking T-bone some fucking husband, wife, and three kids in a fucking minivan. Yeah. No excuses. You I don't say I'm I hear you, man. I want him to get better. I don't want him to be a fucking drunk driver. However, staying employed in WWE right now is not the fucking best thing for him. But do you do you don't think firing him would make it worse? Like he would go down a dark, darker hole. They gotta they gotta send him somewhere. He, he's got to do something. And then Kev, Matt, you guys know as well as I do. If you don't want to go somewhere, you're not you don't want to put the effort into it. You're not gonna fucking do it anyway. You got a point there. Yeah. Maybe not is- fire him. Take him off the road. Say, look, we're gonna keep you around, but you gotta go get some fucking help. If you don't get help, you don't get clean. You're not back on TV. We don't know what's gonna happen to you. Fucking light a fire under his ass. And then 
he doesn't want to get help. He wants to keep fucking treading the same fucking sewers. Then, then you fucking future endeavor him and you fucking hope and pray that it turns him around. I don't know what else you can do. God forbid he would have fucking killed somebody, dude. Well, we're lucky he did not. That's right. He's lucky he didn't. That's true. Well, it would be a terrible thing to talk about if that had happened. Unfucking believable, dude. Uh, in the NXT world, they did Great American Bash this past week. Samoa Joe will guest referee Karrion Cross and Johnny Gargano this week. Uh, we will also see the start of the NXT breakout tournament, which will feature. Oh, well, we already saw the first. Yes, we saw our first two matches, but they're gonna we're gonna have that was on what two hundred five or 205 main event. Yes, yeah, nobody watches that anymore. Do they? No, I thought I thought it was getting canceled. Were not they gonna fucking shut it down? I, don't know. I didn't even know it was still a thing, but uh, all right. We got uh, Trey Baxter. He used to be Blake Christian. Uh, Carmelo Hayes, who's Christian Casanova. That's right. Andre Chase, who is Harlem Bravado. That still boggles my mind that he, I mean, I'm happy that he got a job, but I can't believe after all these years he got, he got there. Yeah. I like the, t- I like the Bravado. Brothers. Oh, I love them. Uh, Josh Briggs, Ike Manjuro. Joe Gacy, Odyssey Jones, and Duke Hudson. Yeah. Those are your guys. I'm a big Joe Gacy guy. In the uh, breakout. And I think he won his match, he right? Won his, he won his first match. And I actually saw him down at Atlantic City, and it was couldn't have been a nicer dude. Just picked up just where we left off back when he was in Studio B. B. Uh, we're getting a, a rematch of the NXT UK match of the year. Uh, as Walter will defend his title against Dragunov. Dragunov's a star. He, on, he could uh, be the next Pete Dunne. July 22nd. So that's coming up in 10 days. So if you're not watching the NXT UK, at least uh, pop in on the 22nd because these two guys beat the dog piss out of each other last time they had a match. Yes, they did. Uh, in the New Japan world, the G1 is taking place from September 18th to October 21st. Obviously, we all know how, how the G1 works. The winner gets a shot. At the IWGP, uh, I guess heavyweight champion at yeah. Wrestle Kingdom. World heavyweight champion. Um, Tom Lawler will defend his New Japan Strong Open Weight Championship against Kojima on the Friday, July twenty third, New Japan Strong episode on New Japan World. Uh, your bitch boy Kota Ibushi. <laughs> I don't feel good after my second vaccine shot, so I can't wrestle the next two matches. For someone who wants 25 hours in a day, he sure looks like a bitch now. Oh, wait. How, when was this match? At, how, how long after this, his shots were this, was his match? Well, he missed a Saturday morning's uh, summer struggle because he is currently have side effects. I had and side then, effects. I didn't go to work. I don't like the cut of your jib, dude. Yeah. Well, you got a fucking man up. I worked, you bitches. Oh, fuck Actually, off. I did go to work. Could have, and then he missed a second day. This bitch. What was he involved in? An eight-man tag with the fucking young boys? Bro, they changed the bout to Shingo against Masa- fucking Master Watto. Good. Master Watto's a fucking star. He deserves a title S- shot. What? <laughs> Better than a fucking Tai Chi asshole that you like. You watch your mouth. He's no longer an IWGP tag team champion. Oh, who's the champs now? The Jungle Naito and Sonata. Really? Good for yes. them. Fucking A, dude. Naito and Sonata to beat, defeated the Dangerous Techers. Kev, they defeated them. Uh, right. Robbie Eagles will be challenging Desperado for his IWGP junior heavyweight title. He'll be making his New Japan return. It took, it took a lot of work. Uh, the full card for Wrestle Grand Slam has been announced for the July 25th Tokyo Dome show. Shingo Takagi takes on Vaccine Boy. Uh, IWGP tag titles Naito and Sonata defend against the dangerous Techers Okada Jeff Cobb Okay yeah baby Uh, El Desperado Robbie Eagles Taji Ishimori and El Fantasmo Against Rocky Romero and Taguchi And uh, they're gonna Do a battle royal for the 2021 King of Pro Wrestling trophy So Yano never lost the damn Thing correct fucking a good For him and then the uh, shows Leading up to Grand Slam uh, there'll be four summer struggle shows with the main event of the last night being Tanahashi against Kenta with the semi main event being Ishii against evil. 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 And that is all the news and notes I have. We talked about Terry Funk. We talked about Mr. Wonderful. Your mother's a whore. Uh, we talked about Chris Youngblood. We talked about Money in the Bank. Come in 
We talked AEW. We possible. talked WWE. We talked Ring of Honor. We talked MLW. Now it's time. Is it time, Tony? You should ask Kevin what time it is. Well, boys, I will tell you exactly what time it is. It is elementary brew time. A beautiful Georgia's lager, pre-prohibition style lager, 5.5% alcohol. But we just said drink responsibly. Thank you, Ryan and Elementary, for giving us a plethora of beers tonight. But ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a game. It is time for a top five list. And now, marking our return to studio, Studio A, that is, I have a top five list. Of the top five guests. Oh no. Of Studio A, but there's a caveat. Uh oh. All of them are currently on your weekly televised episodic wrestling shows. Ooh. So this is more of a order is not important. It's more of just a top five. It's just, it's a five. It's not a top five, it's a five. Because I love all of these people equally. All right. In studio guests? In studio here, not Ooh. Matt's. Ooh. Studio A, because we are A at Studio A. You want to start or can I start? This is, it should be a pretty simple list. I you can like. start. I'm going to start with Sunny Kiss. That's a great guess. Oh, come on. Did not. I forgot about Sunny Kiss. Wow. I feel so bad, Sonny. I'm so sorry. Wow. I love you. And Sonny was gold even she, on the after show. Yeah, it was it was the best. That was a great one. I did not think of Sonny. God I apologize. Damn, dude. All right. Santana and Ortiz. Matt, I said this wasn't a numbered list, but but for the sake of had you have to put numbers next to something. That's number one. That's my favorite. That's one of my favorite days ever. I can't believe I forgot Sonny. Now I'm gonna forget somebody else. Ah. Did you forget Joey Janela? Oh well, well no, because Joey Janela wasn't the same Joey Janela as we had him in Studio B. I didn't. I was not. That wasn't. The, that wasn't the greatest night of my life. Joey's first time here. All right. Can I get a Drew Gulak? Matthew is on fire. Because wow. that is for number sake number three, and Matt. I know he's gonna get num- he's gonna get another one as soon as Tony misses one. I'm not missing this one because I'm going with ba ba. Are you fucking kidding me, Tony? What? Come on, come on. Number five. All right, I'm on the board. Follow ba. Again, board, these dude. are not these are all just for numbers' sake. They're all equal. Uh, obviously, they're all equal because he would have been number one. Brian Myers. No, he would not have been number one. If I wanted to make this a numbered list, I would have made it a numbered list. And I think I had more fun with LAX than I did with Brian when he was here. So Brian is number two, though. Wow. So we are down to one. I'm glad I made this quick because we are running long. Oh, boo. Um, shit. Um, come on, Tony. Wow. You got it. There's one person I'm thinking of, but I don't think Kevin would put him on the list. Guess it. Who cares? I'm going to say Chris Dickinson. I thought about when you mentioned Chris Dickinson before, I thought about it. Okay. But I couldn't take anyone off. All right. Fair enough. I just could. I Chris Dickinson was a great interview. Sonny was a great time. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you who's Dave LaGreca is not on the list. Dun, dun, wow. He's going to be so mad at you, ah, but he'll understand why. When he hears dun, list. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, fuck. I know who it is. Who is it? I know. Who Are it is. you going through like the in-studio guests? Yeah, but yeah, I know who it is. is. I didn't get that far. It's Danny Doring. No, it he's not, not on your TV every week. What? Yes, he is. He's on my TV every week. It is not Danny. Dor- Actually, Dave LaGreca wouldn't be on the list either. Then. <sighs> well, there you go. Yeah, so it's not Danny. All right, in studio on your weekly wrestling program. I mean, he's on. He might not be on every week, but he's on. He has the opportunity to be on every week. He's been on pretty much every week. In studio, in studio. (laughs) Studio A. Studio A. Joe Gacy would have been on the list if it was all studios. All right, let's sync. Oh, who's here? No. No. Gulak. No. Pat Buck is behind the scenes. Yeah. So that the it's not Pat and Buck, I, right? No, and I wasn't okay. here for Pat Buck. Um 
and you weren't here. Oh, we didn't do a show with Sam here. That was like a bonus thing. Uh, it was a PWS thing. Yeah. Let's see. It's not him. He's a rapist. Oh, um, allegedly. But he's OK now. He put it on Instagram. So that's great. Uh, if you believe that bullshit. Um, Wait, he, for real? Yeah, he's back on Instagram. JT Don isn't on TV every week. He's a great in studio guest. Oh, I love JT Don. Uh, Ref Kevin Keenan. Right. Is that his name? Yes, he hasn't been relevant. Yeah, he not, not that sounded terrible. He hasn't been on TV. In a Tony, way. anytime you want to chime in. Yeah, as soon as I figure it out, I'll let you know. All right. Um, in studio. in studio. Right here in North Arlington. All right, all right. All right. It's not Chris Payne. <laughs> no, it is. It is not Chris Payne. Uh. uh surprised i thought this would have been one of the oh, dude there's been so many fucking guests and, and who's here and who's not and how long they were here for how far did they travel it's not danny moff because he's not on tv every week i see anyone at ring of honor last night lsg has never been here nope oh fuck bowens it is Anthony, fuck, dude. The acclaimed, God damn. Bowens, the acclaimed, has arrived. Fucking a, dude. So, in no particular order, Falaba, Anthony was... Bowens, Drew Gulak, Brian Myers, and Santana and Ortiz. It's a good list, LAX. dude. Yeah, Anthony Bowens slipped my mind for a bit. Honorable wow. mention: Definitely go to Dickinson and Sunny Kiss and Joey Janela. Yeah, there you go. I'm sure there's others too, but Bro. I think these are. I don't think I've had a more fun of a time with people in studio than with Santana and Ortiz. Well, boys, as I get the camera set up, folks, it's that time. And I know we've been talking about it for a long time, but tonight is a very special edition of Can You Beat That? Because tonight, after weeks, after months, after over a year, the Shining Wizards Championship is on the line. Is that a fact? Matt and Kevin will battle it out to become, I guess, the official first Shining Wizards champion. But of course, we know the rules of can you beat that? It's got to be the guy that gets two points. One point's not going to cut it. You got zero, you get the fuck out because you ain't winning the belt. You know the opponents. Let's get to the questions after I lower this nonsense. First of all, boys, are you guys ready? This one's got a lot of fucking stakes. No, I'm not ready. Uh, I am as ready as I will ever be. I'm going to, I will, now that me and Kevin are in the same room, my strategy will probably change. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, because we can, see, we can literally like look at each right other's here. eyes. Well, uh. This is not like on the Zoom. Where it can it can look away. I can see his po 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 poker face. Yeah, well, I'm very good at poker, so that, hopefully that helps. All right. Well, you guys both ran tables last week, but I think it was Matt that came out two to one. Am I correct? That is correct. It is. All right. So Kevin, we're gonna start you off this time. We're gonna give you the option. Would you like to go first, or would you like to pass to Matt? I'll pass to Matt. All right, Matt. These are your choices for questions. We've got. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go for some easy ones first. Okay. Oh, so after I say that I'm gonna pass? No, no, because I'm gonna try to leave. I level. I always level it out. I want to leave the hardest possible question for the tiebreaker. That's what I meant. All right. Okay, Matt. This is your choice. You've got double down WWE or double down WCW. Right. Double down WWE has 16 answers. While Double Down WCW has 10. Let's go Double Down WWE. Matt, Double Down WWE in the history of the World Wrestling Federation slash World Wrestling Entertainment. 16 wrestlers have held at different times, maybe some of the same, both the European and the Intercontinental Championships. Matt, we're going to start with you since you chose the category. How many of the 16 can you name? I'll give you a minute because it's 16 questions. 
And while Matt's doing that, might as well get it out of the way now. We are the Shining Wizards. We are playing games. We're talking wrestling. We're talking about Matt's filthy fucking habits when he goes on road trips for wrestling shows. We talk about everything each and every week, Monday nights, 7 p.m. East. Of course, you know it. You're watching us on Facebook. You're listening on The Rant. You're downloading us in podcast form. We are at Wizards Podcast on all social media. You want to join the Patreon, patreon.com slash Wizards Podcast for a mere three shekels a month. You get the greatest tier of all time. You get all four bonus shows. You get a mention every week. And if you want to go for one of those awesome boxes of wizardry. Tony, we're trying to concentrate here. Just going to take a couple more. Kevin, getting this out of the way because we're running so late as it is. Thanks to your fucking list. Anyway, (laughs) that was the fastest (laughs) list ever. You didn't get one. Yes, I did. You got Fala. No, I got Bowens. That's true. Come on, dude. Because you were looking it up. It just happened. Well, you see, I'm allowed to look things up in that game. In the meantime, maybe I get a little thinking music for these idiots. Matt, the question once again. 16 men have held the European and Intercontinental Championships. The history of WWF slash WWE. I'll start with four. Kevin, Matt says he can name four. The question to you, can you beat that? I can beat that. How many can you name? That's a great question, Tony. Don't forget, folks, what's on the line tonight. First time ever. The Shining Wizards Championship. I mean, look at this thing. This is beautiful. And you know what the great thing about this is? The gentleman that wins this is going to get to take this home. I can name. Right now, I can name. No, tomorrow, Kev. Well, yes. Eight. Matt, Kevin taking us all the way up to eight. It's to you, my friend. I'm going to say name eight. D'Lo Brown. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What cart, do you mean? Cart before the horse. I'm the host. Kevin. He told me to name them. 16 men have won the European and Intercontinental Championships. You said you can name eight. Matt says go for it whenever you're ready. D'Lo Brown. D'Lo Brown is one. Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett is two. Owen Hart. Owen Hart is three. I'm going to skip this one now because I have second thoughts. Okay. Triple H. Triple H makes four. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels is five. Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle is six. British Bulldog. Davy Boy Smith is number seven. Oh, these two are killing me. Um, There's nine left on the list. You just need one. I know. Um, I hate that I'm... I should have started at seven. It's got to be him. Did he ever win... Did he ever win the Intercontinental, though? I know he had the European because it was gifted to him from Jeff Jarrett. Did he win the Intercontinental? Did this guy win the Intercontinental? It's one of two. Got it. And they're right next to four and five on my list. I'm going to go with... I can't remember if he did it or not. It's one of the two, and I bet Matt has the other one. I don't know. Matt looks a little nervous. Kev, we're going to need an answer. I know, I know, I know, I know. Maybe I can think of somebody else that I definitely know had it. Um, I mean, how much time are we going to give this guy here? I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i go with Mark Henry. Kevin, I am sorry. Is Mark- it X, was X, did X-Pac do it? Hardcore Holly. I'm sorry, Kevin. Matt takes the point. You made seven. You couldn't make eight. I had two on the list. Who did you have? And it, I was torn between these two. Okay, who'd you have? Who would you go with? Don't do a buzzer thing. Let me just see if I know. Benoit? Well, see, that's why I wasn't sure because I don't think Benoit ever had the European. It was and Jericho then that I, beat well, him. Jericho, I wasn't Correct. sure. Correct. Because Jericho won, he won the European at, at the 17, fucking, right? At the, uh, I deleted him from the freaking list. 
The other eight people on the list, Val Venus. Oh, fucking Val Venus. Eddie Guerrero. Oh, God. How William did, Regal. How did we forget them? Test. How did we forget all these guys? Bradshaw. Oh. Christian. Jeff Hardy. And the last guy to win it, Rob Van Dam. Oh, why did I go with Mark? Henry? Wow. I thought I was giving you guys softball. That was a softball. Question. And that's, that's probably the easier of the two. Matt, you got one point. It's on you. This one's called Double Down WCW. Because remember when Jeff Jarrett had both and he gave a title to Mark Henry? Wait, actually, Matt started. So this one, this one comes to you. I go first. Yes. Yeah. My mistake. Kevin, in the history of WCW, from the, from the conception of WCW on September 1st, 1993, to the time it closed its doors under Turner on March 26, 2001, All right. 10 gentlemen have won both the U.S. and television titles. Now, I'm not including anything that has to do with anything before the formation of WCW and nothing dealing with after WCW folded and the U.S. title continued in WWE. This is strictly World Championship Wrestling timeline. 10 men won both the U.S. and TV titles. Kevin, let me know how many you think you can name. All right, give me a second here. All right. And while Kevin does that, is there anything else I need to plug? Kev, you got any gigs you want me to plug? I'm, Kevin's I'm, I'm the at, one that you're pausing the time for. Kevin's going to be at the Joke Barrel uh, this week, the Oak Barrel Pub in West Orange no, on it's Wednesday. Not true. It's, not true. it's good times. Uh, he's going to be at Boardwalk Buds, even though he does not partake in the Buds. He's still going to be on the Boardwalk drinking the brews. Ridiculously old plugs and you're distracting me. What's the other? Oh, Tierney's. No. Tierney's in Montclair. Open, open mic night. Kevin's hosting. Come on down. Tell a few jokes. Drink a few brews. What else can I plug for Kevin? <laughs> Kevin will be at the hat. As soon as I leave here. <laughs> oh, the TV title always fucking kills me. Please don't forget to... Don't look at my list. Oh, fuck, I didn't even know that was over there. No, what do you think? Whoa, whoa, whoa. He didn't look at it. All right. He gave it up. I believe you. Kev, I'm going to need a number. Come on, dude. Are you serious? Dude, we literally just, this just happened. <sighs> this is a trivia game. You need to think a little bit. There's only 10, dude. All right. I'm well, gonna play... I got four right now, but. I'm going to play some music. Let me see. Let me see. She's coming back to wrestling very soon. There you go. A little Veruca Salt for everyone. All right. Think, okay. So I got to think old. I got to think more old school than I got to think new school. Oh, great. We're going to get fucking struck for that. I, I better not play that. Ugh. I hate Facebook. I hate it so much. It's I actually can, YouTube. I can name shit. five. Oh, right now. shit. Matt, Kevin says he can name five of ten. He probably can name all ten. Question to you, sir. Can you beat that? Uh, I'll say six. Kev, Matt's up in the stakes. Oh, I see that. That's the, that's the point of the game. Kevin's getting angry. Uh, Kevin sees the uh, the silver and gold belt slipping from his grasp. Yeah, that's what it is. Imagine Kevin showing up at the hat tonight. You know he would walk in wearing this. I'm only going there because it's cheaper to take two Ubers hundred percent one. 100%. He would go there and be like, boys, boys, guess what your boy KJG won? He'd be doing the fucking Rob Van Dam thumbs and everything. Uh, Kev, we're up to six. I understand that, Tony. <laughs> I'm not ready to give up that easy. I'm sorry. I'm going to put the camera on Kevin. Fuck this. You guys got to see it. Home Shut the fuck up so I can think, please. <laughs> Uh okay all right wait we're talking WCW what ninety two September what from when from the formation of WCW nothing from Jim Crockett nothing from National Wrestling Alliance nothing from anything that formed before nineteen ninety three WCW such a trivia is such a weird thing because it doesn't really sure is measure your knowledge just measures how good you are on the spot <clears throat> oh. biz oh uh that's gotta be one. I so, I have to, so I'm up to six, so I have to get one more, a four. So, Matt, how was your oh, day? 
Uh, it was good. I drove. No, he didn't do that. He didn't win that one. You didn't drive? I did. I drove a lot. Oh. Where'd you go? Baltimore. And then to home. Wait, you drove? I thought. I thought no, I drove. I drove. I did the driving. Oh, because I thought, I thought Anthony drove down. No? No, he drove with me. Danny drove, and then Danny went back by himself. Oh, poor Danny. Did you have Kate in the car with you? All right, I'm going to go seven on the way back. Were you drunk doing fucking Jim Cornette to her? By the way, Kevin's up no. to seven. Can you beat that? I can't even get him to give me. I that. have eight. Kev, we're going to do this all night. Matt's got eight. All right, so I know this guy never won the U.S. U.S. <laughs> Mr. Bates. He never won it. He never won the TV. I had a chance to win a TV once. Did, and I didn't did win. he win both? Yes. I'll put him on the list. Yes. No. Yes. And I'll get it. I'd rather go down swinging than not. Leave me. Right here. Now I got fucking Veruca Salt in my head. All right. Oh. oh! See. All right. I got it. I got something brewing now, boys. Oh. This he he googled it. No, I didn't um, Google nothing. No Google at all. Just notes. Just literally. Here's the beauty of it, right, Ton? Why he or he just goes hard over there. He doesn't have to try and answer everything. No, I know, but he feels like he needs to. He could he could volley the serve. I will, volley but I volleyed it last time and you beat me. No, you beat yourself. You didn't volley it. You just didn't get the answers right. That's right. That's Do right. I really know eight, Kevin, or am I bluffing? Listen, I don't give a fuck. Wait, I'd, rather, I'd rather bet on myself. Did you say eight or seven? I thought you said One, seven. One, two, three, four. No, he had seven, so I went eight. You went eight. Kevin. No, I took I took one out real quick. Uh, so now you're down to seven. So you can't. No, I'm down to eight, eight right now. All right. Um, I took one out. But no, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna keep him in. I'm gonna go nine. Matt, Kevin is up to nine. Let her rip, Tater Chip. Let's hear him. Kev. Lex Luger. All right. Don't let me fucking ask the question again. How many did he say? Nine? Yes. All right. See, this is why this is important. Lex Luger is one. Booker T. Booker T is two. Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit makes three. Oh, boy. Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner makes four. Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner makes five. That's That was like the epiphany. That's why it was it happened so quick. Epiphany. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat? That makes six. Scott Hall. Scott Hall makes seven. Uh, what am I missing? Who am I missing? This is nitty gritty time. I have nine. Who did I not say? All right. I'm going with... Eddie Guerrero. I am sorry, Kevin. Eddie Guerrero is not on the list. All right, whatever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your new Shining Wizards champion. Would Tully Blanchard would have been considered. Give me my belt. Get it. Get out of my fucking ring. Fuck I just Shawn Michaels do. Yeah. Ah! Easiest. Easiest championship you've ever won in your life. What do they say? Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Shining Wizards, Matt. Play smarter, not harder, people. I, I think you would have got them. How many did you have on your list? Well, let's see. You named three that I didn't have, and I had Guerrero on my list, so I would have lost that. All right, hold on one second. Let me lower this. Uh, uh, Rey Mysterio never won the U.S. I had Raven. Ah, oh, Raven's a good one. Uh, yeah. Canyon's probably on there. Reagan, uh, uh, Raven's wrong. Is Canyon on there? Canyon is wrong. Is Lance Storm on there? No. He had the, the hardcore cruiser in U.S. What about Rick Martel? No, he never had the U.S. <laughs> you guys both would have fucked this one up. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I did it first, I guess. All right, you want the last three? No. The uh, last three. Regal? No, he never won the U.S. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Oh, 
How did Correct. I, he, he did on my list. You still would have got it wrong. Correct. No, Hacksaw, Hacksaw won. Yeah, but you still would have made nine. I would have got to nine if I took off Eddie Guerrero and said Hacksaw. That's eight. I, I would have been eight. That's eight. Come on, who's the Steve last Steve Austin? Two? Is Steve Austin on there? Correct. D D P. D D P. Correct. D D P won the TV. Yes, he did. Way back in the day, he beat. Didn't he beat Mark Merrow for it? I think so. I have the list over here somewhere. Well, who's the last one? Is Johnny B. Bad? No. No. Is it Ultimo Dragon? No. Booty Man. Um, Craig Pitbull Pittman. No. I was thinking like is I it was, Sting? No. no. Is it Tully Blanchard? No. Why do you keep saying Tully Blanchard? Because I feel like he won them both. Is that the Giant? No. <laughs> it's not Art Anderson. No. Fuck no. <laughs> I should have been using this one. It's not Art. It's not Rick Rude. No. Fuck no. It's got to be someone late. Is it? Did I say Stephen Regal? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's not did. him. He no. never won. He never won the U.S. Fuck no. Is it Barry Windham? It's not Sting. <laughs> I can't keep pushing the button. No. <laughs> Fuck no. Dustin. Oh. No, it's not Dustin. Stop. He never won the TV. No. <laughs> Fuck no. It's uh Dean Malenko. No. Come on. No. no, he never won the Fuck TV. No. Jeff Jarrett never won the TV. No. Mongo no. never won the TV. Oh. Bill Goldberg oh. never won the TV. Oh boy. Are you guys done yet? No. no. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck no. Jericho. Oh my oh, god. That's no. a good one. Fuck no. Uh, Prince Ikea never won the TV. No. Fuck no. Disco Inferno. No. No. Co oh, Conan? Fuck no. <laughs> Correct. Ding. I can't find the fucking button. I had him in my head. He was part of the the epiphany. <laughs> It's Conan, right? Son of a bitch. He was one of the epiphanies. And I just never wrote him. Ladies and gentlemen, we are podcast. here with your brand new Shining Wizard Champion. Matt, how does it feel? Feels great. Feels great. As good as sleeping in your underwear on the fucking hotel in, in yeah. Baltimore. I thought we had to go, Tony. Rickety cricket all day long. I want to thank you. The Mark Order Podcast for making this possible for me. Wait, I thought you made it possible. No, this championship was uh, brought to me by the fans. Thank you all zero of you for talking to me during yesterday's events. I appreciate you not bothering me. Oh, boy. I'm going to Uber home. Uber is for goobers. <laughs> wow. That was fun. God. We didn't I, even get to the bonus question. I had Hacksaw on the list, and I didn't say him. And I had Conan... When I thought Eddie Guerrero, I had Conan right there, too. Champion. That's right. Hey, you earned it, buddy. I will defend this against anyone, anytime, yeah. Me next any week, place. pal. Me next week. All right. Anyone. <clears throat> All challengers are welcome. You want some of this Dave LaGreca? No. Oh, no. I like that. You want some of this Kate the Great? You can't handle no. this. Kate, Kate. Fuck no. You want I some of this Bully Ray? You don't know shit from Shinola, buddy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Champion right here. All right. Bring it on, you nerds. Can you film walking in the house and your wife seeing you with the belt? I might she might I might get home before her. She usually does a bunch of shit on Monday please, nights to get ready for Tuesday. Please, I'll make sure this is displayed right when she please, walks in. Please when she walks in the door, just be standing there just wearing the belt and a smile. Just no, my it. mother and I had to make dinner tonight too. My mother in law might be there too. Oh, I knew I knew her, never I let her have a thrill. Time. See Whatever. my wing wang. Wu Tang. That is a pretty snazzy looking belt, I will say. Kev, it'll be your opportunity to challenge for it again next week. Oh, it will be mine. Oh yes. Matt, I plugged a bunch of stuff. Kev, do you have any plugs? Uh no, I'm actually kind of little low till August. So I'm good. I think I covered all the plugs earlier. What else we got? Anything else important that we need to uh, talk about? Slice Boogie next week on the Shining Wizard Wrestling Podcast. Be sure to tune in. Talking all things Slice Boogie. Uh, and I think we're back on Zoom next week, right? I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to play it by ear. Most likely, yes. All right, because the, the interview was based around us being back on Zoom. Okay. Well, Just because of the time. Oh, then it's too Zoom then. All right. All right. But, but it was great to be back here. Yes, it was. Look, I love being back here, and I can't wait to come back again. It's nice, a nice sense of normalcy. Of course, 100%. That was always how. I'm going to go home and make dinner now and then go to bed. Awesome. I'm fucking exhausted. That sounds amazing. I'm going to go fucking go to bed too. And I might have to wipe my swamp ass before I leave. Oh, 
Yeah. Really? So should I call? My house? Uh, I'm calling an Uber right now. Jesus Christ. Good night, Gracie. Uh, oh, boo. my God. Back Even back studio. in studio, huh? Well, you know what? You won the title. Kevin feels bad. I kind of had to make him feel better. How does I, that make me feel better? I it made me great. feel better. So I follow you I on. hate it just as much as Matt does. Oh, that breaks my heart. The shark night. Oh, All boo. Right. Tony, you'll be happy. My Uber's only six minutes away. Great. Now I got to deal with Kevin for six more minutes. Good night, everyone. Peace. Peace, 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 peace. Whatever. Let's hang this up. Let's get this out of here. Goodbye, Zoom.